Hey, what's going on guys? Working on the 2012 Ford Focus today. So I bought this car probably about a year ago now, uh, knowing that it had transmission issues, but it seems like it's getting worse here now. Um, so it does fine, it'll run just fine and shift just fine for a while, but once that transmission starts to warm up, you can definitely tell it's starting to slip and there's an issue going on. And if you guys know these Ford Focuses or the Ford Fiestas equipped with this uh, six speed automatic uh, dry dual clutch system, they are notorious for uh, having a bunch of issues, whether it be with the clutch itself or the uh, TCM transmission control module or the shift fork stick in or the shift motors. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to dive deeper into this. Um, I'm not getting any check engine light or codes popping up or anything. And I know Ford did come out with a updated input shaft seal to keep fluid from leaking onto that uh, clutch and everything. So I'm not sure if that's what's going on. The uh, previous owner I bought this from, they had just replaced the transmission control module before I bought it. So I don't think it's that issue. But I did get this car for pretty cheap, just knowing that there was transmission issues. So what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm going to actually replace the whole uh, dual clutch setup. And I'll see if those input shaft seals have been updated and then uh, go from there. So this is probably going to be quite a long video. I'm going to show you the whole process of uh, dropping the transmission, replacing the dual clutch, and then uh, putting the transmission back in. And then also uh, running through the process of setting up the uh, new clutch and everything. So first things first, go ahead and pop your hood. All right, guys, so once you get your uh, hood popped and everything, I think what I'm going to do is kind of focus on some of the stuff underneath the hood here, get a little more access to the uh, transmission and then the starter there. And then we'll go ahead and uh, jack it up and see what we need to do underneath. But if you take a look here, you can see somebody has been in here before. So this has had the clutch service update. It says C shop manual. Not sure how long ago this was because I don't really know the history on this vehicle but we're gonna go ahead and drop it anyways. So first thing I'll do is go ahead and remove the uh, air filter housing from the uh, throttle body and everything. So you got this flap right here. Just go ahead and pull on that, get that kind of up out of the way. Next, grab a seven millimeter. Let's go ahead and undo the uh, worm clamp from the throttle body there. Go ahead and pull off this line here. Go ahead and push in on this blue button. You got another one on the back side here. So squeeze those two together. Pull off. Go ahead and undo the sensor here. So you got this red locking tab. So just kind of use your fingernail, lift up on it. And then you can squeeze right here with your thumb. And that should just unplug. You have to get that up a little more. Just like that. Grab yourself a cat claw or a trim tool like this. And then you got this little clip right here. Go ahead and just pry on that, bring that out. And then you got this line back here. So you see this gray tab, just go ahead and push in and then just kind of release this tab here. And that just pulls off like that. Now let's see if we can uh, just pull this whole thing out. So it should just pop out of here. Uh, so just go ahead and pull off your hose from your throttle body there and then just kind of grab this and lift up and it comes out just like that and then I'm just gonna take a rag here stuffed in the throttle body I'll probably clean that as well it looks pretty dirty just for right now so nothing falls down in there now we'll go ahead and uh, remove the battery here so you got this uh, lid on here and you just kind of hop up on it. You got these two arrows here, pull out, it just pulls off. And I think there should be a, uh, there's a back piece back here as well, but it looks like this one's missing it. And then go ahead and grab a 10 millimeter. Let's go ahead and undo the uh, positive terminal here. Go ahead and take that off. And then you got your battery hold down, same thing, 10 millimeters. Remove those. And then you 
should be able to just pop this whole thing kind of off of here. Kind of like that. And then you can kind of slide this full battery forward a little bit. So you can get better access to your uh, negative terminal there. Same thing, that's just a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and loosen that up. You should be able to just wiggle this off of here. Now you should be able to just pull this whole battery out of here. Next, grab a 10 millimeter. You got three bolts holding the uh, battery tray on. I did take a vacuum and kind of vacuum this out. You can see the uh, bolts are really rusty there. So hopefully I can get these off of here with no issues. And you should be able to just lift this out of here. You have these lines or your cable here out of the way. Shit, I'm getting caught on. Next, grab a 10 millimeter, go ahead and remove this bolt, give us a little more room. We'll take off this uh, little piece that was below the air filter housing. And then take your trim tool, got a little clip right here. I'm just gonna pull this off, see if this can give us a little more room here. Just try and pop that off of there. So now you can kinda get this out of the way a little more. Next, grab a 15 millimeter, and I'm not sure if we need to remove this or not, but I think it'll give us a little more room here. This uh, piece that the battery tray sat on, you got four 15 millimeter nuts. So go ahead and pull those off. Sorry about that, guys. My camera fell over. Once you get those four bolt or uh, nuts out, Let's go ahead and lift this off of here, get it out of the way. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, remove the uh, shift lever uh, cable here. And uh, if you take a trim tool, I'm just gonna see if I can get back behind it here. And then just kind of turn it. And you can see that just pops right off of there like that. And then you got this, uh, I believe it's a vent. I think this just pulls out of here. Yeah. Vent tube like that. And you can see this vent tube just comes up and then it's held on by this line here. So I'm just gonna pull this off so it doesn't uh, break or anything, gets out of the way here. Plus you can see it's got a little oil on it dripping. Okay guys, so next I'm gonna go ahead and uh, since I want to clean this throttle body and just to give us a little more room here, um, especially so I can get my camera down in here for like the shift uh, cable here. Uh, there's a couple bolts there we need to remove, but I'm going to go ahead and just pull this uh, throttle body off anyways, since I need to clean it and it just gives us a little more room. You guys could probably get by without doing this if you don't want to, but this is how I'm going to do it. We got this red locking tab for your throttle body plug in here and then go ahead and squeeze this comes off like that and now let's go ahead and grab a eight millimeter and remove those four bolts there and you should be able to just pop that off of there like that and it looks like maybe this line was in there at one point so 
this connect that. So with that throttle body out of the way, you can see that gives us better access. So you got two 10 millimeter bolts holding this uh, bracket for the shift cable onto the transmission. So go ahead and remove those two. Yeah, I'm not sure why those were coming out so rough. So now that should be kind of free there off the transmission. So that's good like that. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do next, um, you guys don't have to do this. Um, I think this is just going to make this job 10 times easier is our starter is right down, right down inside there. And we need to remove that starter in order to gain access to the uh, flex plate nuts. Um, and it's just really packed down in there. Um, haven't really looked to see what it would look like to do it from underneath there, but I'll see once I get it jacked up. But I think what I'm gonna do, just to make this a lot easier, is I'm gonna remove this uh, intake manifold. That gives us a little more access to down in there, and we can actually see what we're doing. And it should just be only a few bolts and hoses here to remove it. And that way I can actually clean it out as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that next. So I'll start out by removing like this harness here. Just go ahead and pop that off of there. Same with this one here. Try to get back behind there. Something kind of like that. And then where the throttle body was, you can see this uh, line going right here. So this is a quick disconnect line. And to get this off, what you do is you push in on the red red portion. You can see that there's an arrow on top there. But you push in just on that red portion. And while you're pushing that in, you're going to pull this hose out. So just kind of push in. Keep holding that pushed in. And then that just pops out just like that. And then when we go to install it, all we got to do is just push it in. And then if you want to get this out of the way, you got a little clip here. You can just kind of pop that like that and just kind of tuck that towards the back of the motor. And then we can remove this purge valve solenoid uh, line here. So you can see you got uh, these green tabs here. But you got one on this side and then you got one on the other side. And let me grab a flathead. So let's take like a flathead screwdriver and just kind of pry that side out so along with this one and then press down with it and you can see it kind of unlatches and then you should be able to just push down right here and that should just pop off of there you may have to just go down a little more with that and let me just actually remove this whole piece here clip so there's that just don't lose that now let's see if we can pop this off there we go so this cool hose kind of gets in the way there. Just kind of get it up like that. And then if you want, so you don't lose this, just put this back on here. And maybe it goes this way. There we go. Just kind of do that. And then just to get this out of the way, because I don't want to break it, but you can see you got this little rubber mount here. So you can just kind of press that, slide that off of there. And then just kind of tuck this up out of the way. Actually, let me just unplug it here. 
you can just kind of turn this and get it up out of the way there. And then you got this wiring harness right here. It's kind of in the way. It's clipped on the intake as well. So you get your trim tool, get back in here. Kind of pry that one off. Some of these clips just hold on very well. There we go. So next grab a uh, 10 millimeter and you're gonna have, looks like one, two, three, four. And then the fifth one's kind of hard to see back in here. Five bolts holding that uh, intake on. So go ahead and uh, remove those. So for that one, you'll need a little bit of longer extension here. I'm just gonna use this uh, wobble socket here and see if that makes it any easier. So like I said, this last one's kind of hard to get to, but it's gonna be right underneath here. Just use a small extension. And our part's gonna be probably getting it back in place. But get it broken free there. And then if you can twist it out by hand here. Okay, so now we should be able to let's see if we can pop this off of here. And I think there might be another line back behind there. So just kind of get it like that. And you can see you got these little dowel holding it in. And it feels like I got something else I'm getting caught on. All right, guys, so it uh, looks like I missed a bolt. Um, so there's actually going to be one way down there. I got the feeling around with my hand and it's really hard to get to from up here, um, especially giving you guys a good angle. So I think what I'm going to do at this point now is uh, let's go ahead and jack this up. We'll get on some jack stands, get our skid plate off and all that. And then we'll see if we can uh, access that bolt down there. So before we start jacking up, just grab yourself a uh, block or a rock or something put behind your uh, rear tire here. Okay guys, so I'm on the driver's side here. Let's go ahead and just jack this up. I'm just gonna use my little jack for now. We'll get a jack stand under here, same with the other side. And then once we get that uh, skid plate and everything off, we can find a better jacking point underneath there because we're gonna have to go pretty high to get that transmission out. So I'm just gonna go, uh, you can see this arrow here. I'm just gonna go to the right of that real quick, jack up on the uh, pinch weld here, and then we can get a jack stand there. Grab your jack stand. About like that. Go ahead and lower it. And then, of course, same thing on this side. So now with that jacked up and on jack stands, grab yourself a Torx T30. Let's go ahead and remove some of these screws that are holding your skid plate on if you still got it. A lot of times these uh, just fall off and nobody puts them back on. And then go ahead and get this out of the way. So with that skid plate out of the way, I think what I'm gonna do next is grab my larger jack I'm going to go right underneath the center here, the center support, and go ahead and jack it up pretty high here. We'll reset our jack stands, 
and uh, give us enough clearance to get this transmission out. So then you can go ahead and reposition your uh, jack stands here. Probably go about right there. And go ahead and do the other side. Okay, so if you take a look here, there's the bolt that's holding the uh, intake manifold on. So that is why I cannot get it off. So let me go ahead and uh, remove that with my uh, 10 millimeter. There's that one. And then if you take a look here, you can see that there is a couple wiring harnesses as well, still connected to the uh, intake manifold there. So just take your trim tool and pop those out of there. There's that one and then there's one right above it. So there's the other one right there. Let's see if you can pull that one off as well. So now let's see, should be able to pull this outward a little more here and see what's behind it. Okay guys, so if you take a look here, you pull this out and you got another hose right down in here. And there's gonna be two tabs you're gonna squeeze and then pop out I'm gonna try it with a pry bar. So as I'm squeezing these two tabs, I'm going to see if I can get a long pry bar in there to pop that off of there. But I'll go ahead and show you here at the end, once I get it off, what you're looking for. You can see right there it's not the easiest to get off of there so let me reposition my camera now okay so now we should be able to get this out of here hopefully everything's off of it uh, looks like i got one more so as you can see there's one more clip there this is on the uh, passenger side here you can see for this wiring harness here and that's not the easiest to get out as well get that one undone okay so like that you can see it just broke off but that's all right so now we should be able to pull this out of here hopefully like that and see a little oil is going to leak out of there the PCB valve so if you guys take a look now with that intake out you can see that just gives us so much better access to the starter here and then we'll have easy access to the uh, flex plate nuts there but then also just this like this bell housing bolt here is going to be a lot easier it's just gonna all around be a lot easier to see what we're doing here Okay guys, so I'm kind of glad I removed this intake manifold anyways, because uh, with these engines being direct injection, the uh, valves get caked with carbon. Uh, this one has about 150,000 miles on it, and I'm pretty sure this has never been taken off, and the valves have never been cleaned on this thing. But if you take a look here, let me zoom in, see if I can get you a better picture. Well, you can see the valve down in there, you can see how it's just cake, the stem and everything with uh, carbon buildup. 
and uh, pretty much they're all pretty much like that. You can see just all the carbon on them. And I did a video on, not on this car, but my son's um, 2013 Focus ST with a 2.0 turbo. And I cleaned all his valves. So if you guys are interested in that, I show you how to do that. You can check out that video. I'll put it up in the corner here. But, um, so I think I'll go ahead and do that while I got all this off. I'm not going to videotape that because that's just going to make this uh, much longer. But I'll do that probably at the end there once we start getting things put back together. But now let's go ahead and uh, continue on getting this transmission out. So now we can go ahead and uh, start pulling off our starter wires here. So first grab yourself a 13 millimeter. You got a nut right there. Go ahead and uh, pull that one off. And that wasn't very tight at all. There's that one. And then get yourself a 10 millimeter. And then right below that one, you'll have another one right there. And pull that one off. There's that one. And then this should just kind of slide off of here. Get that out of the way. And then I like to just put these back on again so you don't lose them. Then grab yourself a 13 millimeter and let's go ahead and remove that uh, nut with the stud there for your starter. Get that broken free. And it comes out pretty easy by hand here. And there's going to be another one down below. Let me uh, move my camera here. It's kind of hard for you guys to see, but just below that, you can see there's your other one right there. So go ahead and remove that one. There's that one. Then you should be able to go ahead and pull your starter out of here. Just like that. And then you're gonna have this little uh, insert here. So just kind of pop that off. It should just pop out of there. Just like that. And then if you take a look here, See if I can zoom in here. But you can see right here, that's going to be one of the uh, flex plate nuts right there. So you can see, zoom out here, just how easy, just getting that intake manifold out of there. And uh, you can just get a socket wrench and extension in here and uh, pull out all those nuts. A lot easier than trying to fish something up in here with that intake manifold still in the way. So now you can kind of... Let's just get this shift cable out of the way. So kind of just know how that was of what it was underneath. You can see it's under this radiator hose, this hose here. And you can just kind of slide this out, out of the way. Get it tucked up through here. Just kind of pull it up so it's not in your way here. Next, we can go ahead and uh, disconnect the uh, upper TCM line here. You don't have to worry about the bottom one because that just goes to your shift motors. But this one here, so you got this little gray tab here. You're going to press down on that. Sounds like you, it sounded like it broke, but what you're going to do is just pull on that lever and then this should just unplug here. Get that down all the way, and then 
that just unplugs just like that. Okay, so I think that's the majority of the stuff for right now on top, besides the bell housing bolts. And then uh, this mount up here, which we don't want to take off yet until we have it supported and everything. So let's go down below and see what else we need to remove down there. Okay guys, so next I'm gonna go ahead and just drain the transmission. Um, so get yourself a drain pan. Drain plug's gonna be right here, it's gonna be eight millimeter hex. And then your fill plug is right here on the driver's side, uh, right by the CV axle there. That's gonna be eight millimeter hex as well. It's kind of hard to get up in there, but I'm gonna try to get that one off first. And uh, that way we can allow air to flow through the system and uh, pull off this drain plug. So I'm just using a uh, flex head ratchet here with an eight millimeter on here. It's kind of hard to get up in here. But get up on there and then go ahead and uh, break that free. This might be a little on there pretty hard. <clears throat> Oh, geez. So like I said, it can be on there pretty tight. But once you get it broken free, it should come out easy by hand here. And you can see, since we got it jacked up and everything, there's fluid coming out of the fill plug there. Let me grab a rag and then we'll go ahead and pull the uh, drain plug here. So then go ahead and pull your drain plug as well. This time I'm going to use a breaker bar on this one. <clears throat> so go ahead and let that drain. So once those are pretty much done draining, just come down to a drip. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just replace these uh, plugs here. Just go finger tight on them, just so that stuff's not dripping all over the place. Same with your fill one here. And then these do have a gaskets on them, or O-rings. And Ford claims that they are okay to reuse as long as they're in good shape still. Next, grab a 13 millimeter, and you're gonna have a uh, nut there holding the uh, ground wire on. So go ahead and remove that. Jeez, there we go. It's funny how some of the simplest things are the hardest to do. I'll just put this back on here so I don't lose it. So next I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the wheel and tire here. It's gonna be a 19 millimeter. And then same thing on the uh, passenger side here. So next go ahead and grab some PB Blaster or uh, WD-40. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, spray down into the uh, lower ball joint here just to uh, help get that loosened up here. I'll go ahead and do the same to the other side. To get those uh, sprayed down and soaking for a little bit here, let's go ahead and remove um, this bolt here, going from our steering knuckle to our lower ball joint. Back side here is gonna be 18 millimeter. On the front, this is gonna be a uh, Torx T55. So let's go ahead and remove those. Go ahead and slide that out. All right, guys, so in the next part, we need to uh, see if this is going to separate from the steering knuckle here, the ball joint, and the whole control arm. So you can take a large pry bar and kind of get it into one of these slots here on the other control arm, and then just kind of press this down. And actually, that's heavier than I thought it was going to be. So you can see it. Okay. So 
so luckily that's going to come loose easily um but if you notice you can see looks like i got some grease on the uh cv axle boot there so i wonder if this boot is starting to fail it's kind of hard to tell but it's been you can see there's grease on the tie rod end and then uh, right above the or right uh on the top of the steering knuckle here so i'm going to go ahead and just pull off this whole cv axle and you guys can see how i do that and i might inspect this a little more and see if i just need to replace it while i got it off so i'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the axle nut here this is going to be a 32 millimeter and you can have somebody uh, put, put their foot on the brake as you use a breaker bar to uh, break that loose or you can just use an impact by yourself but go ahead and pull that off Next, we'll go ahead and undo the uh, tie rod in here. So you can just take the, and turn your knuckle that way to give you easier access. And then just grab a 15 millimeter, go ahead and pull this uh, nut off here. So next, we'll go ahead and uh, separate the tie rod in from the steering knuckle. So just take your mini sledge here and I'm gonna hit right on the steering knuckle here and the vibration from hitting that should drop that down. You may wanna just hold it too. Just hit right here, not on the tie rod. Just like that. You can see it takes a little bit to get it uh, broken free, especially if it's rusted. Next, just take you a punch or something. Just see if you can get on that and help uh, push that CV axle out of the knuckle just a little bit here. I think we're good there. So we're going to take your pry bar and uh, again, let's try and separate this all the way. So if you can push it. Push down with this. It's kind of hard. Try from this side here. Just watch your fingers here. What you want to do is try and uh, get that out. That it could be sometimes a pain to do here. Just try not to ruin your ball joint. Just does not want to separate there. Get it kind of like that. And you can relieve the tension on that. So now let's see if we can get this uh, CV axle out the rest of the way. I'm just gonna spray a little PB blaster in there as well, just to help loosen that up. So now I'll see if I can hit this a little more here. See that kind of just loose now out of the steering knuckle and then go ahead and just try and uh, separate this whole thing here so it's kind of like that so what we're going to do next is get the CV axle out of the transmission so you can take just like a pry bar here what we're going to do is get right behind this uh, steel part of the axle here. So you're going to get kind of like that. And then what you're going to do is just, uh, you're going to pry or you can tap it out here. 
So I'm gonna just kind of use my hand here and see if we can just pop this out. So you can see just with a tap here, it's starting to come out. Well, it was. Got a little bit of it out there. Let's try again here. And you may need to, if you can, rotate this to get you a better angle. Let's try that right there. See, it just does not want to come out. So let me try right here instead. came out let me move my camera here it's kind of in the way hopefully you guys can see that it's a little better spot for me to hit on it here it just does not want to come out of there let me try a larger pry bar Okay, so I was able to get that with a larger pry bar. So now, take your axle, and this will come right out. Just like that. All right guys, so on the passenger side here, it's gonna be kind of the same thing. Get your uh, 18 millimeter on the back side. I needed to move that a little bit. And then come on the back side here. So for this uh, long CV axle for the passenger side, you're gonna have this collar we need to remove. Those are gonna be uh, 13 millimeter nuts. You got one there and then one on the top. So go ahead and remove those. And just pull that off like that. Okay guys, so uh, I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna pull the whole CV uh, axle out. You guys could probably uh, pop this out of here and then undoing that lower ball joint there, just kind of moving this whole thing forward a little bit um, and you'll be all right. I just find it easier because it's so tight in here with the subframe and everything, uh, just dropping this transmission out, uh, especially being on the ground and not having a lift. So I just find it easier just to remove the whole uh, CV axle. So I'll go ahead and uh, do that really quick. So again, I'll go ahead and remove the axle nut there with my 32 millimeter. And then again, go ahead and turn this. Grab your 15 millimeter. Zap off your tie rod nut here. And then again, let's see if we can go ahead and uh, separate this here. kind of like that and then again I'll go ahead and uh, knock this through that 
All right, guys, so go ahead and uh, come underneath here. And uh, this one should just pull right out. You don't have to take a pry bar or anything. Um, so just make sure you have hold of one end here. And then you should be able to just pop this on here by hand. Let's see here. There we go. Uh, so just like that. And then just try and uh, feed this guy out of here. There we go. Just like that. All right, guys, so before we go ahead and uh, start pulling the transmission bell housing bolts and uh, supporting the engine and all that, I want to go ahead and get these uh, flex plate uh, nuts off. These are going to be a 13 millimeter. So go ahead and uh, start pulling those. I believe there's a total of six. And then what you can do is you can use a flathead screwdriver, pry bar, and you want to rotate the engine clockwise. Um, or you can get on the uh, crankshaft bolt there and turn it clockwise that way if you need to. Let's go ahead and pull this first one since it's already, you can see it. And this may start trying to turn on you like that. So you can just take your pry bar just to kind of stick it in one of the twos just to hold it so you can get that broken free. If I can get back on it now. And these might be on there too tight, as you can see. So once you get it uh, pretty much loose, go ahead and undo it by hand. Try not to drop it down in there. If, it, if you do, no big deal, since we're pulling it. But when we're going to install these, you don't want to drop it down in there. And so that's what that looks like. So like I said, what I'm gonna do, so you can just take a pry bar or a screwdriver and then just press down, because that's gonna be uh, clockwise. So we go ahead and Move that down like that until you can see your next nut. And you can see it right there. It's the same thing. Get on there. Hold it just to break it free. And you can see. And that one actually, when I undid it, it kind of rotated it, but that's okay. Um, we'll come back to that one. So you always just want to go clockwise. Don't really want to go counterclockwise when rotating an engine. So there's another one. Let's try not to do that again this time. So just lightly break it free. Nut off. And continue around until you get all six of these out of here. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do next is uh, support the engine. So you got your oil pan right here. I'm going to take a block of wood, just something like this, and uh, trying to figure out where the best place, maybe just something like that. So just take your jack, and all we're doing is just supporting it. We're not actually jacking it up, because uh, once we take that transmission off, it's not going to have as much support. So I just want to kind of uh, help hold the engine up right in this area here. So just take your uh, block of wood. Put it on your jack. And let's go ahead and just jack this up a little bit. So get it nice and close there. And then like I said, you're not jacking this up. You just go to where it pretty much stopped right on the oil pan there. You can maybe go just a hair more. Like I said, just like that until you hear it crunch for a second. And just like that. Because all you're doing is pretty much just holding this up just for extra support on the engine there. And then while you're down here, let's go ahead and uh, remove these two uh, uh, bell housing bolts here. Those are going to be 13 millimeter. And 
And then if you know, these are gonna be the same size. So you wanna keep track of where these bolts are coming out of. And then if you go right by the oil filter here, this one's gonna be going in that way. Same thing, that's gonna be a 13 millimeter. So go ahead and remove that one. All right guys, so next let's go ahead and uh, support the transmission here before we start pulling the uh, transmission mount bolts. Uh, I'm just gonna be using a uh, Harbor Freight transmission jack. Uh, I've used it several times on uh, my Fiesta and then also did a Dodge Dart on this as well. Um, and I kind of just placed it under there just to see what I would need. So I think I'm just gonna use these three brackets here. You can see these just kind of bolt on there. Um, and then you can loosen them up, slide these in if you need to. And then we can uh, rotate, the, rotate this however we need to. Makes it kind of easy. But uh, let's go ahead and get this slid under here and at least supported. So go ahead and start sliding this under here. So something probably, probably like that. Start getting it jacked up. thinking something kind of like that and I think we have that have it kind of set up just fine right there like that just put a little pressure on it actually let me take it down just a hair so just something like that now let's go ahead and do this uh, rear mount here so on the back here you're gonna have a uh, it's gonna be a 15 millimeter right in here here's the other side of the bolt um, this is going to this mount here, uh, and it looks like you can also pull this bracket here as well. Um, I'm just going to try this mount for now. If we need more clearance, then I'll probably go ahead and pull this bracket. But for now, let's go ahead and just try this, uh, undo this 15 millimeter here. I'm going the wrong way. Go ahead and pull that out. So just like that. All right guys, so instead of uh, removing this bracket, like I was talking about, um, looks like there's another bolt going through the mount right here. So let's go ahead and remove that one there. Same thing, 15 millimeter. So you see that one just kind of falls out of there. And just kind of leave it right there like that for now. Right, guys so as you can see that's still going to be kind of in the way i thought maybe taking that one out i could slide it all the way back but it's not working um so i think what i'm going to do uh is go ahead and remove this bracket so that did give us a little more room actually just getting that out of the way um so like i said there's another one here let me just see i'm going to slowly lower this a little bit here i just want to make sure it's not gonna start moving okay so you can see that ain't, ain't moving on us yet. So let me go ahead and uh, let's pull this 15 millimeter. It's gonna be right here on the back side. You can see the one end right there. So let me go ahead and pull that one here real quick. And let's see, let's come on here. Okay, so there's that one. And then we just drop this whole mount out of here. And again, so 
So it looks like uh, all three of those are gonna be the same size. You don't have to worry about getting those mixed up as well. Okay, so then it looks like we got one more um, 13 millimeter bell housing bolt back in here that we're gonna have to remove. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that really quick and then we'll get this uh, supported again here with the jack. So you can see that one right there, 13 millimeter. Go ahead and get that one off of there. All right, guys, so I want to show you something here. So on the back side here, check this out. So this bolt uh, was just sitting there like this. Uh, so whoever was in here last did not even tighten that one up. Uh, now this does hit the uh, catalytic converter bracket in that here. Um, but you can see they uh, didn't even tighten that one up. So I'm just going to go ahead and loosen this by hand. You can see it, it was just finger loose. And you're not going to be able to get this one out. So, but it is, you just want to get it to where you can move it in and out. And then just try and pull it out all the way. So it's kind of sitting in there like that, hidden right up against your uh, catalytic converter. But uh, once we go to put this back on, we'll go ahead and tighten that one. So it should be good just like that. So now let's go ahead and uh, get this jack back under here. So go ahead and just slide this back under kind of the way it was. And like I said before, guys, can't stress enough. Be careful while doing this. These transmissions are not the lightest. And I don't want to see anybody getting hurt doing this. So uh, it's nice to have an extra set of hands, too, if you've never done something like this. Um, slide that a little more. I'll probably bring... Might bring that one in. Eh. I'll just kind of leave it like that for now. Just kind of support it here. Just kind of like that. So back up top here, um, go ahead and take off this 13 millimeter that was right by, right above the uh, starter there. Go ahead and uh, take that one off. There's that one. All right, guys, so just uh, above that one that we just pulled off, you're going to see there's another one right there. Let's take your 13 millimeter wrench. It's probably going to be easiest. There. All right, guys, so one more, I think, is all we need to take out. But you can see there's the one we just removed. And if you just follow that up just a little more, you can see the other one right there. It's kind of hard to get my light in there. But I'm going to try just a 13 millimeter deep well. Let's see if that's enough to get it broken free and out of there. Okay, so there's that one. Alright guys, so I lied. There should be one more bolt, but uh, actually on this car, it's missing. So again, whoever put this back together before uh, didn't do it correctly, but it looks like there would be one more bolt right here. So this is where your shift linkage connected. You can see the threads there, but this bolt will come in from the uh, passenger side. So you'll have to reach right around here. You can see our cats down there, but it's going to be right in here. And like I said, this one's missing on here. So you guys may have uh, another one right there. All right, guys. So now we should be ready to pull this upper mount here. Um, just make sure all these cables are coming out of the way. It looks like there is this bracket right here. This cable going in there. Just kind of pop that one off of there like that. And just making sure there's nothing else attached to the transmission that we need to uh, remove. So yeah, I think we're golden. So let's go ahead and uh, get this mount off of here. So 
go ahead and grab yourself an 18 millimeter. Again, make sure that the uh, transmission is supported underneath there. And uh, go ahead and remove this 18 millimeter here. You can see it kind of shifted there. Pull that out of there. And see if we can get this bracket out of here. And actually, I shouldn't have put these back on. Did that just so I didn't lose them. Right, guys so this is probably not necessary but i think it's just going to make it easier dropping this out of here and getting it back up but i'm going to go ahead and remove this bracket right here so you're going to have a uh two 15 millimeter bolts there so let's go ahead and remove those two and then for that bracket right there that's going to be a uh, 13 millimeter pull that off Grab your uh, 15 again, and then you can pull off that other one. And you go ahead and get this out of the way. All right, guys, so I'm just gonna shove a little rag in here. This is that breather hose here, just so uh, nothing gets down inside there. So now we should be uh, ready to start dropping this and pulling it out um just be careful you can see you got a lot of sensors here um there's another one down in there as we're pulling this out make sure you don't break those um hitting them up against the uh, subframe or anything like that um so yeah let's go ahead and uh, see if we can start separating it so for right now i'm just gonna see if i can uh kind of actually let me see if i can disconnect this right here just to give us a little more room. This thing gets right in the way. Pull that off of there. Let's see if I can maybe tilt this kind of out of the way a little bit more here. So kind of like that. It's a little better. I'm just going to see if I can kind of wiggle this out just a little bit here. All right, guys, so it looks like I lied to you again. Uh, so I forgot one more bolt on the bell housing. This is where that ground strap went. I forgot to take out that stud with the nut there. So again, that's going to be a 13 millimeter. Just be very careful doing this because the transmission is very loose now. Really tight on there. Okay, so there's that one. That one's pretty long, so. So now let's see if we can kind of pull this out just a little bit. So you can see it kind of separating right there. So it's kind of like that down below here okay so just take your time doing this um, just don't do anything too unsafe uh, not sure how this is gonna work so just kind of pull it out and then just keep checking up top there Coming back down below here, and uh, let's get it lowered here. All 
you can see uh got her all the way down and then i might just uh i need to tilt this a little bit all right guys so sorry about that my uh, camera ended up dying on me um but if you take a look i did get it out so all i did was take off that one end piece there and i was able to flop it over and then of course slide it out from under the car here and then i tipped it up and if you take a look here um so this is going to be the bottom portion of it but you can see the camera zoom in here but you can see it's just caked with oil and i believe that's actually motor oil so looks like this rear main seal is leaking on this car um so i'm going to end up having to do the clutch and everything um but i'm also thinking i'm going to be doing the rear main seal here so let me go ahead and crawl into the car and i'll show you okay guys so underneath the car here as you can see it is soaked with motor oil see it's all up in there and right in there but up in here it's all dry which is normal so this rear main seal is definitely leaking so it looks like i'll be showing you guys how to do that as well on this car uh so i will need to remove the uh, flex plate along with these bolts here um i will not be able to get to that tonight uh, my, it's my daughter's birthday and we're hosting a little party for her tonight so i need to get cleaned up for that but uh in the meantime i'm going to try to get back at this tomorrow morning i'm going to look up and see if i can get a rear main seal from a local auto parts store around town here and uh hopefully i'll see you guys in the morning all right guys so it's the next morning here uh, i went ahead and ordered the uh, rear main seal from uh, advanced auto parts uh, just waiting for that to come in and then I can go pick that up. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and uh, start on getting this dual clutch out of here. So first thing you want to do is uh, just tip the transmission up just like this. And then I used a little 2x4 I shoved under there just to keep this uh, pretty stable because it will want to tip on you. Okay, so first thing you want to do is uh, you'll see this snap ring right along inside here. Let's go ahead and remove that. You can use a pick, a uh, flathead screwdriver like this. Just watch yourself, this may fly out on you. So get kind of like that. Take this other end. Be kind of tricky getting this guy out of here. Just pull it out just like that. And then you can go ahead and just pull out this, uh, it's like a center hub, I think. Just go ahead and lift that out just like that. Okay, so next we need to remove this snap ring here. Um, if it's pretty tight on there, what you can do is just take a socket that fits around here, give it a couple uh, small taps, and that should relieve some of the pressure on the snap ring. And then you can take yourself a large pair of uh, snap ring pliers. Let's see if we can get this off of here. Just watch yourself, because it could go flying off of there. There we go. Finally, and let's see it. So it will go flying off like that. So just watch yourself. Okay guys, so now we need to uh, remove the uh, clutch from the transmission. Uh, I'm gonna be using a special tool for that. I know some guys, they can uh, kind of rig something up uh, using these uh, flex plate uh, bolts here and then they just kind of lift it out of here while prying. You could do it that way, or I'm gonna do the easier way, which is uh, using this special tool. Um, you can get these on Amazon. That's where I got this one. I'll put a link in the description for it, but it includes everything you need to do this job uh, on this car. So what you're gonna do is take these, uh, these little like fork things here, and you're gonna just kind of set this in there Kind of like that. In here. And then you want to just get on right underneath the clutch there. 
So just kind of something like that. And then uh, let me grab my flex plate nut here. So grab three of your nuts here. Get these put on here. You can just go finger tight with them. Let's get those finger tight and you should be all right. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off these nuts here. It's almost like a socket here, but it's the smaller one in that kit. You can see here's the bigger one. Just take the smaller one. It's gonna sit on there just like that. Take this massive uh, plate thing here, and you're gonna use um, these holes here. Actually, let me zoom out a little bit here so you guys can see. Oh, that's about all I can do. But uh, just go ahead and set this on here. You can see how it kind of just sits on all those there. Let me just adjust my camera here. So kind of like that. Take these nuts that were on there. And again, you can just go finger tight on all. Just make sure that's centered right there. I'm gonna go ahead and take this big old forcing screw. Go ahead and screw that down until it bottoms out. And you're gonna just keep turning this. You grab a wrench. So then grab yourself a, uh, not sure why they use such a big one, but it's the 30 millimeter, or you can just use even a crescent, which would, which would work just fine. And then just go ahead and start tightening this, and that'll start forcing this uh, upward. You can kind of hear it. enough yet or not let's see so you can see it's kind of wobbly there so then you just go ahead and uh, lift this out of here and looks like I may need to go just a little more just go a little more on this Lift it right out of there. And then go ahead and remove this. Next, you can go ahead and just pull out this whole piece here. Kind of get up underneath it there. And that's what that looks like. Set that aside. And then as you can see, just all of the uh, dust in here, which was probably uh, not helping with the shift forks um i don't see any uh transmission fluid you know besides the uh oil from the rear main leaking which is a good sign uh so it's kind of hard to tell but i'll take a flashlight here in a minute get the rest of this off and we'll see if it has the updated seals in it so now you go ahead and uh, remove the shift motor here and that's going to be a torx e8 which you need to use on that one so go ahead and remove those. And then you should be able to just pop this out of here, just like that. And then go ahead and move on to your uh, other side, other shift motor. Go ahead and uh, pull that one out, same thing. Next, take yourself a Torx E10, and we're gonna pull off these two on the top fork here. Those just come out just like that. And 
and then you'll grab yourself a Torx T45. We're gonna pull off these two screws right here. And then you can go ahead and just lift this off of here. All is one piece, just like that. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing to the other side here. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead and remove this uh, sleeve right here. So you got three Torx T30 screws to pull off. And then you should be able to just lift this off of here. Just like that. Okay guys, so with all that out, as you can see, so this is the seal that's prone to leak, but this is the actual uh, updated one so the uh, original ones were a black uh, seal so somebody's been in here and has updated this to the uh, brown seal um, and if you look down in there it's kind of hard to see but it's going to be the same thing there's going to be a uh, black seal in there which is the old style but this one has the updated brown one and it doesn't really look like these are leaking so I did buy new seals but I'm not sure if I'm going to replace them I may just save them for another uh, one of these if I get another one in um, but as you can see it's just caked in uh, dust and everything here from the clutch so that could have been the issue uh, preventing those shift forks from uh, engaging all the way so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this bell housing everything all cleaned up just gonna use a vacuum suck up these big chunks of dust here and then uh, go ahead and use some brake clean wipe it all down get it all nice and cleaned up here i'm not going to videotape that because that'll just take too long but i will i'm not going to try to get any brake fluid around the seal here if i decide to uh keep this one in so i'll just try to keep some of the uh brake clean along here and just kind of wipe it out as best as i can so let me go ahead and do that and while i do that i'll go ahead and uh, let my camera charge and everything all right guys so as you can see got this all cleaned up went ahead and used a bunch of uh brake clean some rags and then at the end, I went ahead and uh, used compressed air and blew everything out. And then just make sure you don't breathe in that uh, clutch dust either as you're blowing this out. And probably want to stick a rag where your CV axle went as well. Just so you don't get any of that debris down in there blowing there. And then you want to make sure too, you blow out all these uh, holes where our screws and everything went. Uh, just so we get the proper torque on all those. And then just be careful... Don't get a bunch of uh, brake clean on this uh, seal here. You don't want that leaking past that getting down into your bearing there. So, uh, like I said earlier, um, so this one does have the updated seals. So I don't see any point in replacing these, pulling them up, because they're doing the job just fine. And these are designed to permanently not leak. Uh, like I said earlier, if you do have the black seals, which is the original ones, those will uh, start leaking on you eventually. So you do want to replace those. Um, so this updated one is a brownish, kind of like a brownish orange, but then also if you look inside here, you can see that one's been updated as well. And, uh, if you have a black one of those, you want to go ahead and pull that out and replace it. So like I said, I don't see a point in replacing these, um, just kind of a waste if I pull these out. So I'm going to leave them in and I'll show you here. I did buy the whole kit though with the new seals. So there's a part number for that. I'll put a link in the description for this. It's always good to have on hand. I'll save these ones for if I get another one in that hasn't been updated. But it comes with a few parts here. Uh, so these are gonna be the seals. So it comes with all new seals and then snap rings that we pulled off earlier. And then it comes with uh, the CV axle uh, seals for right here as well. 
So I may use those, I'm not sure yet. But here's that, uh, the larger one. And you can see, this is a, I guess it's more of an orangish brown. But this is an updated one. And then this is gonna be the smaller one, which will drop down in there. So uh, really quick, I'll show you how you would go about doing that. But also in this kit, it does include, so you got your new flex plate, uh, flex plate nuts, but then it also includes the uh, new bolts for the lower ball joints, because I guess you're not supposed to reuse those either. And then it comes with a new collar here for your CV axle, because you're supposed to put a new one of these on as well. So like I said, I'll put a link in the description for this whole kit here. Um, and then you also have this tool. This is a special tool to uh, remove this inner one here and then to install the uh, larger one there. So you wanna pick one of these up. Uh, I got this one off of Amazon. I don't know the part number, it's just a cheap one, but I'll put a link in the description for it. But really quick here, I'll show you kinda what you would need to do to replace those. So the way you'd go about doing this is, um, so you wanna get this one out first. So what you can use is uh, you can use a couple picks, try to pry it up, or you can take a really small drill bit and uh, just kind of don't go too far because you don't want to hit that bearing. Just screw it in, uh, drill it in a little bit there, go on each side, and then just thread in just a tiny screw or something, and then take a pair of pliers and try pulling it up. Or if you get your hole big enough, you can get a seal puller like this down in there, get up under there, and then pop it out. But as you can see on the new seal here, you can see that's what it looks like inside. So you got this metal, it's pretty much a metal ring here. So if you can drill through that and then be able to get something under there just to kind of pry just a little bit, and then you should be able to just pop that off of there. And then once you get that popped off, this of course is just gonna slide down on there. Um, now on this tool, you can also use this piece here. You would stick that on and then go ahead and stick your seal on here and that'll protect the uh, seal from the splines. So once you get that on there and you can get it all the way down, this of course will come off and then of course your seal would be down on here like that. And then you would take this piece here and this would go right on top of that. And then you just knock this down in until you get flush. And then that's it for that seal. Pull this guy up. Now for the small one, what you're gonna use is you're gonna take this piece in your uh, kit here. And then you can see there's threads on here. So this is gonna go sit down on top there. And then you're just gonna kinda start turning this one here. So you pull this off first. But you're gonna get a socket that fits that, and then you're gonna set this on top, and you're gonna start turning this as you're kinda pushing down. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna start getting lodged into this small seal here. So those threads are gonna catch on the inside of this seal so once you get down just a little bit there, this will be uh, threaded into the seal there. And then what you do is you'll take this forcing bolt here and you'll go ahead and start screwing that in. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna push down on this. As that's pushing down on that, it's gonna start lifting this portion up, pulling that seal out with this attached to it. So go ahead and do that. And then what you're gonna do, they include this in your kit, is you'll put your uh, this piece on here like that, and then your new seal's gonna slide down on that to protect uh, the seal from the splines on that. Once you get that kind of pressed down in there, you're gonna go ahead and take this tool here, and then this is gonna sit on top of the seal so once it's all the way down past that point, you can pull this out, get rid of that. And then uh, this is gonna go down. It's gonna sit probably about like that on top of your seal because it's not pressed in there all the way. 
And then once you get that in there, you're just gonna start tapping this until this uh, becomes flush with right here, just like that. Then you know it's uh, properly on there. And just pull it out, and that's all there is to it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at our new uh, clutch kit here. So it's just the uh, original one, which is the, I guess it's the luck is how you say that, 07-233. I got this one off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for it. But if you go ahead and open this up, I've already been in here. Um, you can see I got to set an intake gasket since I knew I was taking that off. But you can see it comes with, uh, here's one of the shift forks comes with this new sleeve and then if you look in here it has some instructions that kind of stuff your other shift fork um, so it looks like all new bolts there for your shift forks and that and your screws and all that slave cylinder and all that so take a look underneath here and then of course your new uh, clutch there so we'll go ahead and uh, start getting this installed so then go ahead and grab your uh, sleeve from your new kit here and if you notice it'll have this little spot right here that's gonna go there's a little indention over there so go ahead and stick that down on the shaft there Grab your new uh, screws, which are gonna be the Torx T30s. And let's go ahead and get these snug. And then we'll go ahead and do a uh, torque on them as well. Grab your torque wrench and you're going to torque those to 8 newton meters, which is right around like 73 inch pounds. So go ahead and torque those. It's really not much at all. Okay, so what we need to do now is uh, get our shift forks in here. And you want to make sure these dowels are in here. So you have one right there. And then there's another one in there. Make sure those dowels are in there and didn't get pulled out with the shift forks. But what you're going to do, take your shift fork here and you're going to want to use, so this one is more narrow. You're going to want to put this one in first. You'll see they're individually wrapped and you'll see the other one has a wider uh, spot right there. But what you're going to do is just go ahead and set these down in here. Make sure you get up uh, onto those dowels there these out of the way so they'll just kind of sit on there like I said make sure you're in that dowel or that side whichever one and then uh, go ahead and just kind of set these in here for now grab your uh, two new screws they give you go ahead and stick those in there and I'm just gonna kind of finger get these started with just my fingers here we don't want to tighten these down yet so just kind of like that and then go ahead and grab your other shift fork your wider one and then you want to also just make sure not to get these mixed up with the other ones so these ones have a, a serial number somewhere on here um, you can see 511, or I guess all the numbers there, 210, 511, uh, 2802. So you don't want to get these matched up. These will match the serial number on those. So just do kind of the same thing here. And you can see this one here has the, it's wider. So this will go on second. And uh, go ahead and drop this one down in there. Kind of the same thing. Make sure you get the dowel. Get the drop down in there, just like that. It'll kind of set in place. And just kind of drop those in. Get your two screws started here. So it's kind of hard. 
good to get them started. So just kind of like that. Now let's go ahead and uh, stick our shift motors in just to get these aligned. So then go ahead and grab your shift motor. And what you want to do is just kind of stick this in place here. And you want to make sure this goes in there flush. So you can see right there, I had to turn it just a little bit. You can see now we're flush on here. So then we'll go ahead and do the same to the other side. And then same thing on this other one here. Because so what you're trying to do is just get those splines to line up. Let's go ahead and stick it on here. You can see that one lined up perfectly. And so you may just have to turn this a little bit just to get those splines lined up. So you want to make sure that's flush. Now we're not going to stick the bolts in yet. We're going to go ahead and tighten the uh, shift fork bolts now. And now we'll go ahead and uh, get these ones snug here with your Torx T45. And then you go ahead and tighten those to uh, 19 Newton meters, which is right around 14 foot pounds. Can get this snug. Next, you want to remove these uh, little retainers. These are just for shipping, so you kind of just squeeze these and then just kind of lift it out of there like that. And you can just discard those. You don't need those. So next, go ahead and grab your uh, Torx E10. And what we're going to do is tighten all these down. Now, if you notice, there is a white mark on all these. That one's right there. This one's kind of hard to see, but it's right there. But what you want to do is you get any one of these marks along here. Uh, what you want to do is just turn this to where that gets lined up. So like I said, you can use any one of these marks. Just make sure it's lined up. And you can see it's kind of, uh, there's kind of a hump there. And this is kind of a flat portion there, but just make sure those line up. So just go ahead and get those snug. So you may have to just kind of hold it while you tighten this up. So like I said, just get that snug, and then we'll do a final torque on these as well. So just something kind of like that. Go ahead and do the rest of these. So then grab a torque wrench and you torque those to 26 newton meters or equivalent to 19 foot pounds. Just get on those. You may just have to hold this just to make sure it doesn't turn on you, but that's good. And these may not line up perfectly. You can see it's kind of off just a little bit, but you just want to make sure it's over that hump there and it uh, fits in perfectly. Just like that. All right guys, so now we need to lubricate the splines. Um, there's a special grease Ford wants you to use. Uh, I thought the kit came with it, but it does not. So you will have to buy that separate. Um, and I do not have any of that. So I'm just gonna put a light coat of uh, wheel bearing grease, high temp. Um, I'll put a link in the description for the correct stuff. And then the, what they want you to use is just a little transmission fluid. Just kind of coat this right around here. So let's go ahead and do that. So like I said, it's not the correct grease that they want you to use, but it's better than nothing. So I'm just putting a little coat of this on the splines. Like I said, this is just high temp wheel bearing grease. You really don't need much. Just coat that bottom one. And then you'll want to do the same thing to the top one here. Just kind of work that in there a little bit. Kind of like that. 
and then take you some of the uh, transmission fluid that you're going to be using, the dual clutch stuff. Put a dab of that on your finger. And then you're just going to kind of coat this right in here with some of that fresh transmission fluid. Just kind of like that. And then they also want you to use some of that uh, grease just right on the tips of the uh, shift forks here. Just a little bit there. Let's get that on there. So just something kind of like that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, slide this over our input shaft. And if you notice, there's two notches here on the side. So those need to sit down into these grooves here. There's one on this side, same thing on the other side. So you can just kind of set it in here and then you just kind of turn it. And you can see it kind of just drops right on top there. And then you take these uh, Z washers you can see there's a raised edge. So the raised edge you want up, because that's gonna fit around here. You can see that fits on there perfectly. Same with this uh, upper one here. It's gonna fit around this one, just like that. All right guys, so if you take a look at the new clutch, uh, before we go ahead and put it on, we need to remove the center piece there. They must just take, uh, leave this on there for shipping purposes. So go ahead and take off that snap ring there make sure you don't lose that and you can go ahead and pull this out and you can see that gives us room to put in our uh, snap ring there all right and so to lift that up in there um, you can use that big tool again if you want but if you use so this came off the old CV axle for the passenger side uh, this is actually works as a handle pretty much and you can kind of just stick it on there like that. And then if you order that new kit like I did uh, earlier, it comes with a new one of these and you won't damage the new one just by doing this. So we'll just use this new one as a handle as well. Take your old flex plate nuts there. And you can go ahead and screw these in. Just finger tight's fine. And this will create pretty much like a handle. Comes in pretty handy. A lot better than using that big old tool so it's kind of like that now we can go ahead and uh, lift the new clutch in there and then just make sure these Z washers are centered not tilted or anything and let's go ahead and drop it in so just watch your splines there As you can see, you may have to just turn it just a little bit to get it to drop down in there correctly. Just kind of like that. Should be good right there. And then you can go ahead and take off the little handle here. Okay, so now we need to get the uh, clutch pressed down on there just a little bit. Uh, you can use the special tool if you want, and then uh, use you kind of thread that in, and then it'll kind of put pressure down on this and slowly press this on. Or the easier way, you can just take this, which was in that tool kit, set it on there just kind of like that. So it's right along this bearing. And then we're gonna kind of just uh, hit this down on there. So then just take your, your hammer here and you want to be careful doing this. You don't want to go down too far. So just kind of hammer this down there and just keep an eye on it. Cause we need to be able to expose where that uh, snap ring is going to go. So just slowly tap on this. You can see it already starting to press down on there. Just go a little bit and then just keep checking it. that. So now we 
we go ahead and uh, get our new snap ring on that came with it. And if you take a look here, you'll want it to face kind of like that to where it's, the, it's coming up at to like a triangle or a peak. And that's going to go down like that. And then if you remember, I had trouble getting this one off. So what I did was I made my own pair of uh, pliers here. This is just an old pair of needle nose that I had laying around. And I actually cut, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but I took my Dremel and I drew, uh, Dremeled in just a little notch there. So let's see if we can get this kind of started on here. Again, make sure that's the right way. And then we'll let the uh, socket do the rest of the work. But if you can get this kind of started on here, like I said, I did this little notch on these pliers here. So it'll kind of sit in there without coming out. Let's see if this is going to work or not. Because this snap ring has so much tension on it. So if you can get it kind of started on there. And uh, spread open enough. So kind of like that. Just watch yourself. You don't want that to fly off on you. And then you can take that socket we just used. It came with our special tool. And we're gonna just kind of tap on this until it locks into place there. So grab your hammer. And just go ahead and slowly tap. We're gonna stop once it uh, seats in there. So just kind of watch it there. Just like that. You see it snap into place. Just make sure give it maybe just one small little tap you don't want to go too much and just like that so next what you want to do is grab this little gear here and you'll see the white paint on here you want to match it up with that one there so you'll take this and then just kind of drop it down into place to just move this a little bit this whole clutch piece here just like that there we go and if you take a look there's that right where that just below this white line here inside the groove there there's a little white plastic piece there so you'll take this snap ring and this the openings need to be in between that uh, little white plastic piece in there so this uh, clip doesn't pop off of here so what you want to do is just kind of get this set in here you may have to use your screwdriver again just make sure there's no orientation so yeah there shouldn't be any orientation on this one the way it goes in so just kind of get it set in there use your flat head Oops. Just like that and what you can do is just kind of move that over to where it's kind of now it's centered in between that little piece right there so the openings in between that so just like that it should be good right there so what you'll do now is go ahead and pull out your shift motor here and then uh, you're gonna take this special tool this was in that uh, kit and it'll uh, go into the splines there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this uh, counterclockwise about 12 to 14 times. You'll kind of hear it click. So just go ahead and, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five, and you can kind of hear it click, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then what you do, this will be under tension. So you just want to kind of just uh, release it here. Just slowly let it do its thing. You don't want to just let go because it'll spin your ratchet. Just until the tension's all off of it and then we can release it. Just like that, go ahead and pull that out. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the other one. So same thing on this one here. Counterclockwise. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And then we'll go ahead and let it do its thing here. Release back. Just like that. So then what you want to do is just take yourself some anaxes. Ford recommends you do this. And uh, you just want to put some here. Just a little bit. Not too much. On the splines of that. And you can put a little bit on the outside here. Just so it doesn't seize up in there on you. Just something kind of like that. And then we'll go ahead and set this in here, just like the way we did. You don't want to force it in there with screws. You just want to get those splines lined up. And it should just go in there like that. Grab your four new uh, Torx E8 bolts that came with the kit. Get these uh, nice and snug in there. And I'm just going to... Get these snugged up. You guys can torque them if you want, but the torque on these is only like four Newton meters. So really not much at all. But if you guys just get them snug, you'll be fine. Just as you do snug them up, just kind of go get snug and then just go down to this one second and then you kind of go over and across do the same thing the other one okay guys so one last thing i'm going to do since that kit did come with new um CV axle seals here. I'm going to replace these because these are probably the original ones. So they're probably getting all hard and everything. And it's a lot easier to do this with the transmission out than in. So might as well go ahead and put the new ones in. So just take your seal puller like this. And uh, what you want to do, just kind of get up under the lip there. Just a little bit and then you can kind of pry that out of there. Just like that. Alright guys, so I didn't know my uh, camera wasn't recording after I pulled that seal out. So, um, I got the other one installed, but I'll go ahead and uh, do this other side here so you guys can see. And I'll make sure it's recording this time. Just be careful as you're flipping this transmission over as well. 
especially with your sensors and all that. So again, let's pull this side out, get up underneath the lip there. And let's try this side here. Pull it out like that. And grab some grease, coat this new seal in. So I got the new axle seal coated in just some grease here, just to help it go in. And uh, so what I used is this inch and seven eighths socket, comes in handy. Um, I've used this on like a Honda CRV not too long ago, same thing. But you can see it fits in there just perfect. Just like that. Um, so that gives us plenty of... Sorry about that, camera fell over again. So it fits in there just perfect. And uh, you can see that'll give us plenty of room to hit this down into place. So what you want to do, make sure this is all cleaned up. Nothing down in there. Set your new seal in there. Kind of center it. Grab your inch and seven eight socket. Go ahead and set that on place. Again, try to get it centered here. Grab your hammer. And we'll just go ahead and start hammering this down. Maybe a little more. You kind of notice that change in tone. Oops. Okay guys, so it looks like we're not fully seated right there. The other side didn't really have this ridge, so this inch and seven eighths socket fit in there perfect you can see yeah, it looks like it might go in just a little more let's just see if we can pound down this side a little more nope. so what we can do we just need to go down just a little more it looks like on this side I wonder if we take the old uh, seal like that and we can hit it. I just don't want to damage it. If we take that like that. And then just give it some light taps here. So just like that. Seems like that worked out. That oil is just from this old seal here so that looks good all right guys so now we're just about ready to uh stick the transmission up in there uh, i do need to run by the store real quick go grab that rear main seal and as i was cleaning up letting my camera charge here i noticed in that bag that had the uh new bolts for the lower ball joints um it did have the grease i was looking for so it's in this bag here and uh, let me show you guys. So this kit does include the grease you're supposed to use on those splines. So this is it right here. So it does not come separate. It does come with this kit. I just didn't look further enough. But oh well, it's already on there. Like I said, I just used some wheel bearing grease on that. So should be fine with that. So just want to let you guys know that. So I'm going to run to the store, get that rear main seal, and then I'll be back. Okay guys, so I uh, just got back from the store, got that rear main seal, and uh, as you see, I did remove one of these flex plate bolts, uh, just because I took this with me to uh, the parts store just to see if they had brand new ones, because I know they say you're not supposed to reuse these flex plate bolts. I have reused them in the past with no issues, um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to reuse these ones or not. Um, may just have to run by Ford tomorrow, uh, but we'll see. So these are going to be a 19 millimeter. So go ahead and zap those off with your impact. And you can see if this will just pull off. It's probably going to be pretty hard to get off of here. Let's see if we can just kind of maybe pry on here. Be careful doing this. You don't want to drop this on you. You can see it kind of move there. Just go at different angles here. Let's 
see it kind of moving here. Let's go back and forth with it. This doesn't want to break free from that. little more off of there. There we go. Just got to wiggle it back and forth. Get stuck on there. Okay guys, so as you can see that is leaking. Uh, somewhere along here um, before I go ahead and pull this out though I think what I'm gonna do is uh, kind of clean this up with some brake clean spray that all in here get this nice and clean uh, while it's still in there that way it doesn't contaminate into the oil um, I probably should drain the oil but you can see we got that block of wood sitting right on the drain plug I'm not sure how much is gonna come out of this uh, when I do pull this off but uh, let me go ahead and uh, get this cleaned up and then I'll come back Okay guys, so you can see I got that all cleaned up, just using some brake cleaning rags. Um, so what I'm going to do now is pull these 8mm bolts here for the seal. And like I said, not sure how much oil is going to come out of this, we'll see, but I do have a drain pan ready. So go ahead and pull these out of there. And then just take you a screwdriver, you may need to just kind of pry on this. Get it out of there because you can see there is some silicone on here. Let's check out my pry bar here. There we go. So pry that off of there like that. And then as you can see, it is starting to leak right here because the oil is pretty much right on top here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of let this drain a little bit here. Like I said, I'm debating whether I should drain uh, all the oil out or maybe just a little bit. It was gonna be pretty hard with my uh, jack right there. So I'm trying to figure out what's the best bet of uh, going at this. Or what I can do is maybe just jack up a little bit more on this end just to kind of tilt it so the oil kind of stays on that end. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do yet here. All right, guys, so what I think I'm going to do is I got a jack stand here um, with a block of wood. I'm just going to put this like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and just lower my jack there that way I can have access to the drain plug and then I can go ahead and drain the oil there and then that'll bring the oil level down um because I want to make sure this gets a good seal on it and that uh bottom part of the seal goes right in here but you can see there's just it's oil right there because the lower portion of the oil pan is uh, right in there so what I'm going to do like I said I'll go ahead and drop this really quick here uh, just go slow. I got this block of wood to support everything in the jack stand, and then I can go ahead and uh, drain the oil there. So just kind of take this down slowly here. like that it's out of the way here you can see that's already leaking so make sure you got your drip pan there so then you can go ahead and pull your drain plug here make sure you got your pan down there Go ahead and let that drain. 
Okay, so once that gets down to just a drip like that, all done draining, go ahead and take your drain plug and screw that back in. And then uh, go ahead and get that snug with your uh, 15 millimeter. Just like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get it set up the way I had it before. Get rid of this jack stand and this uh, block of wood. I'll go ahead and uh, put my block of wood back under there with my jack supporting the engine really quick. And then I'll come back. Okay, guys, so as you can see, got my uh, block of wood set up the way I had it before. Right there by the drain plug supporting the engine. Again, I'm not jacking up on it, just kind of supporting it there. So now let's go ahead and uh, get the rest of this cleaned up here. And uh, what you want to do... Um, so you don't want to spray brake clean in here because you don't want that going because this will go straight down in your oil pan there. So what you want to do is either just spray it on your rag, wipe it off, but you also want to just kind of get this cleaned up right along here, this uh, little area. Make sure that's free of oil for when we put on our new seal here. So you can just kind of stick your rag down in there. Just get that cleaned up as much as you can. And then we'll also seal up along here. So I'll just spray some brake clean on my rag and then just kind of wipe this off. So let me go ahead and uh, get this all cleaned up. Okay guys, let's go ahead and take a look at our new uh, rear main seal gasket. So you can see here's the old one. Um, like I said, it was leaking somewhere right around here, I think. This is probably the original Ford one that came with it. Uh, I'm going to replace it with this Felpro. And it has the uh, installation tool to help you line it up. That's what that looks like. And it's going to be part number BS40689. I got this from Advanced Auto Parts. Uh, but you can probably find it cheaper on Amazon. So I'll put a link in the description for it. And uh, what I like to do is just take some of this uh, black gasket maker here. And I want to make sure this isn't going to leak again. So I like to just take a little bead of this. Just kind of put down here along the bottom portion of it and my gasket maker's not squeezing out of there too easily so kind of like that just put a thin layer of it just to fill any imperfections on the aluminum just kind of rub this in get a nice uh, thin coat on it Kind of too much on that one side, but it's all right. So something kind of like that. Let's go ahead and install it on the car. Okay, so go ahead and grab your new seal here. What you're gonna do is get this plastic piece here. So you want to make sure you get that onto the uh, rear of the crankshaft there. It'll kind of stop there, and then you can tilt this however you need to. And then you're going to slowly push this on, but this is going to kind of pop off of there because this is just helping you get it aligned onto the crankshaft. So go ahead and start sliding this off towards your bolt hole there, however you need to. You can see it kind of just sits on there like that. And then you can pull this out of there discard that get to all your bolts here get those in place so just get those kind of snug here and then we'll do our uh, final torque and I'll actually just screw them in by hand that's easier so get them finger tight and then they want you to go in a sequence like this. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, as you tighten these. So you're gonna torque these to 89 inch pounds. So uh, again, you're gonna start on this one here. Get that one tightened. There's one, it's going to be number two, 
number three, four, five, and six. And then I'm just going to double check one more time just to make sure. Okay, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and let that gasket uh, maker set up um, probably overnight because um, I got some other stuff I need to get done today. So this is probably about as far as I'm going to go for the day. Okay, guys. So I went ahead and uh, just cleaned up the uh, flex plate, just sprayed it with some brake clean on both sides here, as you can see. And then you want to pay attention. So you see this arrow here and there's a yellow dot. Same with this side here. Uh, that's how we're going to line up the uh, dual clutch to this flex plate. You want to make sure you line those up because there's also a arrow on the uh, dual clutch. So what I'm going to do just so I can see this is I'm going to remark this with some yellow paint. Just kind of color it in like that. Same thing on the other side here, just so we know. And it's a lot easier to see. And then if you take a look on your dual clutch, you can see there's the arrow for that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, mark that as well. Just a little paint and I'll put some on these threads right here as well. So we know exactly where that arrow is. Okay guys, now that our uh, rear main seal has had time to cure, let's go ahead and get our flex plate back on. And if you notice, you got these two dots here, which you'll want to line up with these two here. And then just like removal, you may have to uh, wiggle it back and forth to get it fully seated on there. Just try and line those holes up. And now I will be reusing the original flex plate bolts. Um, I went by the Ford dealership and they didn't have any in stock and they actually wanted seven dollars a piece for these so that's pretty expensive they said they were gonna have to order them if i bought them and it was like a week out so i'm just gonna reuse these i talked to one of the uh, service techs there and he said they actually reuse them all the time with no issues they said just make sure you use some uh, red loctite which i will be using that's what that looks like so i'll just put a little bit on the threads here Okay, so once you get all those coated in some uh, Loctite, go ahead and uh, start threading them in there. You always want to just start these by hand because you want to make sure you're not going to cross thread these going into the back of the crankshaft. So get all these started by hand, and then we'll get them snug and we'll go ahead and torque them. So then just go ahead and uh, get those snug with your 19 millimeter. Just kind of go in a star pattern there and then we can torque them. Okay guys, so next what you want to do is probably have somebody help you do this, but that uh, flex plate's going to turn on us once we try and uh, start torquing those. So if you come over here to the passenger side, locate the uh, crankshaft bolt right there on that our harmonic balancer. It's gonna be a 22 millimeter. And if you get just a breaker bar or something, go ahead and get on that. And then just have somebody here holding this breaker bar, uh, keeping that crankshaft from turning as you go ahead and torque those. Okay guys, so I got my wife uh, holding the breaker bar over there. And I'm gonna go ahead and torque these to 89 foot pounds. And again, we'll go in a star pattern. So there's one. Two. Three, four, five, 
five. And six. All right, guys, so next I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this uh, flex plate counterclockwise so we get this yellow dot or arrow right up here where the uh, starter goes. So you can just do this by hand here. So about right there like that. Okay guys, so now we can go ahead and uh, start putting the transmission in. As you can see, I kind of got it slid under there on my jack. So let's go ahead and uh, start jacking it up. And then also before we start, you may just wanna, you can just turn this however you need to, uh, to get this yellow triangle here, kind of where the starter is gonna go. So we can go ahead and line up those uh, bolts for the nuts on your uh, flex plate there. Okay, so let's go ahead and start jacking it up. Again, just watch all your wiring harnesses here, and then same thing along the uh, back side there. And uh, just slowly go at this, uh, jacking it up as much as you need to, or using your tilts down here, however you need to, to uh, go ahead and get that in place. Yeah, these, like this sensor here, this one you really want to make sure you don't get caught on anything. Um, and then once you kind of get past this point here, it's not too bad. So let me go ahead and go up some more here. Again, just keep checking up top, all angles, just to make sure you're not crushing anything. Okay, so as you can see, I'm really close here. And what you wanna do is just make sure, so you can see you got that dowel right there on the front, kind of where the starter goes. And then there's gonna be another dowel. Not sure if you guys can see this, but uh, right, right up top here, on the top corner here, there's another one. You can see my finger right back in there. So you wanna get it close to those dowels, and then we can go ahead and slide it towards those dowels. Okay guys, so as you can see, I'm super close now. You can see our dowel's pretty much lined up on this side. Looks like I need to go back this way a little more. So I'm gonna go up top and then just kind of maneuver it in and uh, see if we can get that kind of lined up there. Okay guys, so as you can see, um, well, hopefully you guys can see, but it's hard, our, uh, Flex plate uh, bolt isn't lining up with the clutch here. So what I'm gonna do, you can either rotate your clutch or you can rotate the flex plate. I'm gonna go down with the flex plate because I can see the clutch, uh, that bolt right is about right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just use my pry bar and just slightly rotate this downward. And it looks like I'm a little too close with the transmission. So let me go ahead and just back it off just a little bit. Give me a little more room for that flex plate to uh, move. So kind of like that. So just kind of push this down just a little bit here. So we can see it a little better. So kind of like that. And if you can, you can just rotate this clutch here to where it's uh, gonna go through that hole there really hard to kind of tell let me go down just a little more here so kind of like that and then looks like we're pretty close there so let me see if I can just slide this in there so you can see kind of like that and then you just want to make sure it's kind of hard to tell but you can see our triangles right there and then if i move this transmission forward you can see our yellow dot 
right there on the threads. So we know we're uh, lined up correctly because if you don't get that lined up, you're gonna have a bunch of vibration and uh, everything else. So make sure you get that lined up. And I think what I'm gonna do now, so it's almost like I need to drop this engine just a hair to get the uh, dowel lined up here. So let me go ahead and do that. So actually, let me just tilt this transmission just a little bit here. So kind of like that, you can see we're on the dowel now. And then you can just kind of give it this one last push. Make sure this one back here gets lined up. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth. And it looks like we're right up against the uh, engine there all the way. So now what we can do is go ahead and just start getting uh, most of our bell housing bolts in. So these uh, top three ones here are gonna be these ones again. Uh, they're all the same size. So that one's gonna go in there. Let's just go ahead and kind of get these started by hand. And then you can go ahead and move down by your oil filter. And you're gonna have this one here, which is the long stud. That one's gonna go right up in this one. And then these two bottom ones here, it's gonna be just like the top ones, that same exact size. Okay guys, so with a few of those bell housing bolts uh, finger tight, let's go ahead and do the uh, upper mount here. That way we can uh, get this all put in and then we can go ahead and uh, lower that transmission jacket out of the way so we can get to these other bell housing bolts. So just go ahead and take your bracket here. Again, this one on here. It's kind of like that. And the stud was on towards the front of the car here. So get those started. And then I'll go ahead and grab my impact and let's go ahead and just get those nice and snug. And then you can go ahead and grab that plate. Just watch your wires here. Get these on the studs there again. Kind of like that. Go ahead and grab your four nuts here. Get those started. So grab your big mount bolt here and you may need to just kind of wiggle this around so you can get it started down into the mount there or the transmission and it looks like we need to so the transmission needs to go that way just a little bit here so let me see if i can move my jack That kind of started like that. Grab your 15 millimeter. Let's go ahead and get these nuts here tight. And then go ahead and grab a 19 millimeter. Let's go ahead and get this snug and then we'll torque it as well. Then you grab your torque wrench and you're gonna to torque that to 111 foot pounds. So now with that supported up there, we can go ahead and uh, lower this transmission jack, get it out of the way here. So now you have better access 
to this one bolt that goes uh, right next to the catalytic converter, as you remember. Um, whoever did this job last did not tighten that up, so we'll make sure we go ahead and tighten this one up. So I'm just gonna get it finger tight as well. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten that uh, bolt now uh, with a 13 millimeter. Can't really get a torque wrench up in there, but the torque's supposed to be 35 foot pounds. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, tighten it up, get it nice and snug uh, before we get this mount back on. It'll just make it a lot easier doing it now than later. So if you got a ratcheting wrench, it's probably gonna be the easiest to get up in here and uh, get that one tight. And then you can go ahead and grab your two other bolts here, which are gonna go towards the driver's side here. Same with this one right here. Okay guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten up uh, all the bell housing bolts now, and then we can move on to that mount. Uh, so all of them are gonna be 35 foot-pounds, and I'm gonna kind of go almost like a star star pattern on these as well, just in case the transmission isn't fully seated yet. Uh, it's not gonna be cockeyed, so I'll start like with one down here, and then I'll go up top, come back down here, and just kind of alternate until you get all of them uh, snug down to 35 foot-pounds. Okay, so now go ahead and grab your mount here. So it's gonna sit on there like this. Go ahead and slide it in there. Get your two bolt holes up there lined up. And then this one. And then again, it's gonna be those uh, three bolts that are the same exact size. So it doesn't really matter where they go. And then before I go ahead and snug everything up, I'm gonna get the these ones started as well. So you'll have two here. Uh, you wanna use the black one that goes through the mount here. Let's get that one started. And then line up your hole for this one here. Okay guys, so that's the wrong hole. That's why it wasn't working. So what I need to do is you can still kind of slide this forward. Kind of like that. You have to use your knee to kind of hold it there. There we go. And let's go ahead and get all those snug. And those will all be uh, 15 millimeters. So once you get all those uh, tightened up, this one here you will want to torque. That's going to be 63 foot-pounds. The rest of these you can just get nice and snug.
Okay guys, so now that we got all of our uh, bell housing bolts tight and torqued down along with the upper and lower mount there, let's go ahead and uh, get this jack out of the way. So we'll go ahead and lower the uh, jack off the engine. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get all of our uh, flex plate nuts on now. So again, they gave you some new ones in the kit there. And this is where you want to be very careful because you do not want to drop one of these down in there. If, if you do, then we're going to have to uh, open up the whole transmission again. So just be careful. Um, if you're not fully... So as you can see, we're kind of downward. I wish we were more like this. It'd be a lot easier to get it on. So what I'm going to do, uh, seems that we know that we're already in our arrows there. Got the yellow stud there. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, rotate this downward. We'll get that on the next go around. But like I said, I just want to get them kind of about right here just so we can get them started because I do not want to drop one of these nuts down in there and have to do all this over again. So again, you can use a flathead screwdriver, or pry bar, pry on the uh, flex plate here, or you can have somebody down below turning it on the crankshaft bolt. I just find this easier. So we just kind of go around until we see our next stud. So if you can get it to about right there, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but that gives me plenty of room and I won't drop it. So get that on there carefully with your fingers. And just try to get that finger tight. Once you get that one finger tight, just go ahead and keep going down. You can see it there, that's a little better angle for you guys. Just keep rotating it until you get all six of these on and started and then we'll do a uh, final torque Okay guys, so they want you to torque these in two stages. The first one being 106 inch pounds, and then the second stage, uh, 18 foot pounds. Um, it's gonna be pretty hard to get a torque wrench in here. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just gonna go by feel here. But I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get this one tightened to where it almost starts turning the uh, flex plate here. And then uh, I'll skip one and then we'll go to the next one, do the same thing, and I'll keep going around. So that'll be like a star-shaped pattern. And then once I get all six torqued to, uh, or not torqued, but tightened to where it's turning the flex plate there, then I'll go back around, and I may have to jam in my pry bar here to keep it from turning, and then just go a little bit snugger. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. So I'll just use my ratcheting wrench here, 13 millimeter. Like I said, just tighten this a little bit more. To where you're almost turning the flex plate you can see it's starting to turn there so now i'll go ahead and uh, rotate this downward so i'll skip that one and as you guys are doing just be careful on the teeth here of the flex plate so once you get to this one here, go ahead and tighten this one some more. About right there. And then go ahead and rotate it down more.
get that one. And then there's that one. See that one's starting to turn. So then what you can do is rotate this again. So we already did that one. So keep going. So then tighten that one. So just keep repeating this process. Once you get all these ones tight, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, snug them up just a little more to where you think uh, 18 uh, foot pounds is. Okay guys, so that should all be right around 106 inch pounds. So now we'll do the same thing. Um, but we'll try and do uh, right around 18 foot pounds is what you want to be at. Okay, right there, guys. That should be all set right at uh, right around 18 foot pounds or so. So with those tight, let's go ahead and uh, get our starter in now. So go ahead and take your rubber piece here, little insert, and go ahead and get that placed in here. Kind of sits in there just like that. You can see it, kind of the L shape goes down right there. Make sure that's in there nice and tight. So then grab your starter. Make sure these uh, dowels are on here. Try and bring this down. Get that on the this dowels there. doesn't want to go on, you may need to just rotate this just a hair, kind of like that. Kind of like that right there. Grab your two bolts here. Let's get those started. This bottom one might be easier from down below. Grab your 13 millimeter, go ahead and get those snug. And then once you get those snug, if you want to, you can go ahead and torque those. Those are gonna to be torqued to 26 foot pounds. So now we can go ahead and uh, finish hooking up the starter. So go ahead and take off your nuts here. Just this one and then that very bottom one there. 10 millimeter. And then you can go ahead and slide this on. Put that in place. And then go ahead and get your nuts back into place there.
So now let's go ahead and get our uh, shift bracket back into place. So we kind of just get it undone from here. And this went underneath this hose here. Kind of like that. And also underneath this one here. And then you can kind of get your bracket holes here lined up. So here's those holes. Got your two bolts look like this. Go ahead and get those in and start it on here. And then you go ahead and connect your ship cable here. Just get it right there and then just push it on. So now we can go ahead and plug in the uh, wiring harness for the TCM right there. You want to be careful doing this. You don't bend those pins that are inside there. But what you want to do is, let me get this line out of the way. You want to get this kind of pushed on here. So kind of like that. And then what we're gonna do is pull up on this gray lever here and it should suck it onto the plug in there. Kinda hard to get your fingers back down in here. Just like that. You see that's on there. Just make sure it's nice and tight and it won't fully seat you can see the bottom one there. It's kind of right up against it. This one uh, will not sit all the way up against it. So once you get that lever down, it's locked into place right there like that. So then come down below here, right by your oil filter. And let's go ahead and hook up this ground wire. That's gonna go on this uh, bell housing bolt that had the stud. So go ahead and uh, get that on there. Get your uh, nut on there. And then if you guys uh, if you guys forget this, or if you get, go to the end there, you try to start the car and everything after everything's put back together, and it's not starting, you may want to check this ground wire just to make sure you got a good connection, or that you didn't forget to put it back on, because the car will not start without this on. So go ahead and uh, 13 millimeter and get that tight. Okay, guys. So I think what. Uh probably do next is get the uh, intake back on here um, but like I said earlier I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean out these valves and the stems because they are just caked with carbon um, I'm not gonna record that because I do have a uh, video on that already uh, from a uh, 2013 focus ST so it's gonna be the same procedure so I'll put a link in the uh, description or right up above for that so check that out if you're interested but I'll go ahead and do this really quick and that way I can let my camera charge as well while I knock this out. Okay guys, so I finally got the valves all cleaned. Uh, if you guys decide to do this, it's gonna take you a good hour, hour and a half just to get all these clean. But if you take a look there, you can just see how much cleaner those are. That's the way they should look. They're not gonna be perfect and shiny new, but as long as you get all that carbon off, you'll be good. And like I said, if you uh, decide to do this, you can follow along on my other video because uh, you want to be careful doing this because I'm not sure if you guys can see but these valves are open here on cylinder number four but then all three of these are closed and you don't want any of that carbon going down while those valves are open so like I said just follow along in my video and I'll show you how to do that so next go ahead and grab your intake here and we're going to replace these gaskets here you always want to do that when you remove the intake so if you just take a pick and get up underneath there's a little slot right here Go ahead and pull all four of these out of here. Okay, so I went ahead and got all that cleaned. Just kind of used some compressed air, blew out all, all this area in here, and then just kind of wiped out any of that dirt that fell in there. So the gas that I'm gonna be using is this Felpro MS97324. Got these off Amazon, I'll put a link in the description. 
go ahead and take these and then you can just kind of press them in there they got these little things on the sides that help hold them in place so just make sure they're fully seated kind of in there and then you can just come over to the side of the intake there and i am putting a new throttle body gasket on here so same thing you got a little slot right here go ahead and get under it with a pick pull that guy out of there and then for the throttle body gasket i'll be using this fell pro one as well 61377 the link in the description for it as well and then just kind of the same thing set this in here and it kind of holds itself you may have to stretch this one just a little bit so just kind of it's kind of like that So then you go ahead and uh, flip over your intake here and let's go ahead and uh, get this kind of set on here. Make sure these wires are kind of out of the way and then you got your uh, PCV valve hose which will connect onto this. So let's kind of just get it into place here and just be careful of your uh, intake gaskets there. And then remember we got this uh, bolt that goes down below there so let's kind of get these out of the way here I'm just gonna kind of set it down in here wiring harnesses here so kind of like that and then you got these little dowels that will go into those holes there just kind of get them set into place and then what you can do take your one of your bolts here try to get at least one of these started here just to kind of hold it on there So kind of like that. And I'm going to try to get this one in really quick here. Just don't want to go too far because we want to still be able to connect that uh, PCV valve hose there. Okay guys, so it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but you need to reach back here. Get this PCV hose on. And... Looks like it's uh i need to loosen this loosen these a little bit here because it's too tied up against there so just go ahead and loosen these let's see if that's enough now but if you reach back here you can feel that pcv hose and then just get it on that spot there and then you should be able to push it on and you'll hear it click so you hear that click then you know it's on so then you can go ahead and tighten these up by hand again these two on top here so then down below here you can go ahead and get this one started on here as well and then you also have those uh, wiring harnesses so like this one here should be able to it'll snap into the intake there with that little Christmas tree style clip and then same with this one here uh, this one's gonna go 
Not hard to see it there. And then you can go ahead and get the rest of these uh, started by hand. And then uh, we'll go ahead and torque them here at the end. So once you get all those snug, go ahead and grab your torque wrench. And uh, there's a special sequence we're supposed to torque these in. And you're going to want to torque them to 177 inch pounds. We're going to start out with this middle one. That's going to be number one here. So go ahead and torque that one. And then you're going to come over to this one to the right. That's going to be number two. Sorry about that guys. So then you're gonna come over here. This is gonna be number three. So pretty much all you're doing is working from the inside out. Torque that one. Come over here. It's gonna be number four. And let me change my socket here. And then come back all the way over here. This one's kind of a challenge. This is going to be number five. You can get a deep well in there with your torque wrench. Let's see if I can just get this a little more tighter here. Got to kind of reach down in here to get it. There's number five, and then we'll go down below, and that's going to be number six. And then you can go ahead and get your uh, wires kind of set back up on here. So this was kind of like this. This one came down on there. And this was kind of on there like that. Next, go ahead and bring around your purge valve solenoid here. And I think this goes underneath that. Get this wire out of the way here. That's going to connect on that line right there. So get it kind of pushed on there. You can kind of hear it click, and then you can push up on that back side there. And that kind of locks it into place. And then you got this little rubber boot here that needs to go around this bracket. Just kind of slide that back in place right there. And then you can bring around this guy here that goes in the, that little slot there oops and i just broke that that's all right we can still kind of maybe zip tie it there but this is going to go down into this little red um, portion there by the throttle body so if you just get it down there 
You should be able to just push right in on it. And it'll kind of lock itself in there just like that. And then you can go ahead and plug in your purge valve solenoid here. You can go ahead and grab your transmission vent. Uh, you can go ahead and pull out this paper towel that we stuck in there at the beginning. And then you can go ahead and stick this down in there. Just kind of pushes down in there. And then you can see it kind of just wraps around this right here. It's just kind of like that. Just make sure that's pointing downward. Alright guys, so next I'm going to go ahead and mount the throttle body, just so nothing falls down in there. But you can see how dirty it is down along there and then inside here. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up really quick. Just be using some of this throttle body cleaner here. Okay, so go ahead and get your throttle body on. You can see I got it cleaned up. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was. Go ahead and get this set down in here. Make sure that gasket's on there. Go ahead and get your holes lined up here. Get a couple of these started. Once you get those snug, grab your torque wrench. You're going to torque those to 89 inch-pounds. And you just kind of go across from each other. And then you go ahead and uh, connect your wire. For your throttle body, uh, if I can find it here, here it is. Go ahead and put that plugged in down there. And then you got that red locking tab, push that in. And then you can put your wire into this little clip here. Like that. Okay guys, so I totally missed a step here uh, for this top mount bracket here on the transmission. I forgot to put this bracket. Uh, this bracket goes over the top like this before um, we need to put these nuts on. So with the, end, with the uh, transmission being supported on the back there, we should be fine taking these four uh, nuts off really quick, sticking this bracket on, and then we'll go ahead and stick those back on real quick. Just go slow as you're doing this just to make sure. And again, those are uh, 15 millimeters. Just go ahead and get your bracket on here. Gotta go underneath the wires here. Gonna sit on there like that. Just make sure none of these wires are pinched or anything. And then you can go ahead and get your nuts on there. And then you go ahead and get this wire loom in place. Uh, there's that hole there on the body. Just go ahead and stick that back through, just like that. All right, guys. So I got to looking, and I forgot to put on a bracket. So down there on the transmission mount, that stud, I forgot to stick this bracket back on there. Luckily there's enough room to get it back on there. So just go ahead and get that on. And then with your nut here, go ahead and get that started. And let's get that in place. So then you can just take your shift cable. I took that out just to give me a little more room here. You 
see kind of that white portion I think goes inside there. There we go. So just kind of something like that. Kind of hard for you guys to see it there. There's a better view of it. Okay guys, so that's about as far as I'm gonna go up top here. Um, I think we'll go ahead and move on down to the bottom there. I'm just waiting on my CV axles to show up. And um, I don't wanna get the battery and tray all that in yet because we may have to go through here with a long funnel to go ahead and fill the uh, transmission there. I think that might be the easiest way unless we just use a pump and that to get it up in the transmission. So uh, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm still waiting on my CV axles to show up. So once those show up, then we'll get started on the uh, bottom portion of it. Okay guys, so back down below here, um, I did finally get my new CV axles in, but before I go ahead and uh, start putting those in, um, I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and fill the transmission now, just because that plug the uh, fill plug is kind of hard to access, especially with the CV axles in there. So let's go ahead and do that next. Um, what I'm going to do is grab my jack, go ahead and jack this up, get my jack stands out of the way. And I'm going to lower my jack about to where it would be level with the tires on the ground. Just because this is kind of tilted right now. And uh, I'm not going to get an accurate reading uh, when I go to start filling that. So let's go ahead and do that next. And uh, we'll go ahead and start filling. Okay guys, so before we go ahead and start filling, just double check, make sure your uh, drain plug's tight. Again, that's an eight millimeter Allen. Just get that snug. If you wanna torque it, you can. The torque spec is 32 foot pounds. So it should be good right there. And then if you come through the driver's side wheel well here, uh, you can actually remove your fill plug pretty easily since we only had this hand tight. So go ahead and pull that off. Then just put a clean drain pan under here. So once that starts flowing out, it'll collect a little bit of that. Okay guys, so the fluid I'm gonna be using is this modal multi dual clutch transmission fluid. I got this off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for it. And uh, Ford claims this calls for right at 1.8 quarts. Uh, so went ahead and just got the two, but actually these are a little over one quart. So 1.05 US quarts. Um, this stuff's a little bit cheaper than the genuine Ford stuff, but it is compatible. If you take a look here on the back, it even says uh, Jet Rag, which is who makes this transmission. And you can see Ford Power Shift right there. So this is compatible. And then uh, I'll be using this funnel here. I think this is going to be the easiest way. Or if you want, you can get one of the uh, pumps that goes on the top of this and then you can pump it in. I think this is going to be a little bit easier. That's why I did not put the battery or any of that stuff in yet. So we can kind of go from up here and then put this tube down into the uh, transmission. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just start adding fluid uh, until it pretty much comes uh, running out. And then we'll let it get, get down to uh, just a small drip and then we can put our uh, fill plug in. So go ahead and make sure your funnel's nice and clean. I'm just gonna kind of set this down here. It's kind of like that for now and I'll go through the wheel well here and let's insert it into the transmission. So you can just kind of kind of fell down in here but just get it to where it's uh, inserted into the transmission. I want to make sure it goes in there too so your fluid just doesn't run out because this fluid's not the cheapest either. So I'm going to say kind of like that. I'm going to go ahead and just start filling here. I'm going to go kind of slow so this doesn't overfill here. Okay, so there's a 1.05 quarts. I'll go ahead and move my camera so you guys can see it start to come out. Okay, so here goes the uh, second quart.
Okay, and as you can see, that's starting to uh, run out of there. So I'll go ahead and uh, pull the funnel here and we'll let this uh, just get down to just a really small steady drip or until it stops dripping. Okay guys, so once it gets down to just kind of a small drip there, you can go ahead and replace your fill plug. Uh, what you want is the uh, level to be uh, even with the bottom of this fill hole here. So if you need to use an Allen wrench to check and see, you can stick that in there, but we're good right there. So go ahead and uh, get your fill plug put back in. And then go ahead and take your eight millimeter hex and go ahead and tighten that up. Again, if you wanna use your torque wrench, you can. It'll be the same as the drain plug, 32 foot pounds. So should be good right there. So then just take a rag and kind of wipe up any of this extra fluid that ran down. I'm not going to spray it with brake clean yet because I don't want to get any in that hole there for the CV axle. Okay guys, since I already have the vehicle level and everything, I'm just going to go ahead and replace this oil filter. Since we already drained it when we replaced the rear main seal, don't have to worry about that but I'll go ahead and replace the oil filter and then uh, get it filled. I'm not gonna record that because that'll make this video much longer. If you guys need to know how to do that, I got a video on the same card, how to uh, change the oil. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll come back. Okay guys, so I went ahead and got my oil filter changed out and then went ahead and added some oil as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jack this back up. Let's get it back under the taller jack stands there and uh, we'll go ahead and start getting these CV axles in. Okay guys, so really quick here, as you can see, I got some new uh, CV axles. Um, probably could have reused these, but I figured while I'm already in there, just go ahead and change them out. And then, because uh, I kind of noticed a little grease on this one, so the boot was probably on its way out. But I went ahead and uh, just went with the Genuine Motorcraft. Got these off Amazon. There's the part number for that one, TX-814. That's going to be the driver's side one. And then the passenger side one is tx dash 812 i got both of these off amazon i'll put a link in the description for them but just kind of measure them out make sure they're the same length plus another reason is it comes with this bearing so i wanted to make sure i had a new bearing too compared to this old one so i'm just going to go ahead and swap these out and then they do not come with uh, the axle nuts so you will need to uh, just swap these over to the uh, new ones there so let's go ahead and get this uh, passenger one in now and then before I go ahead and stick this one in, I'm just gonna put some of this uh, transmission fluid that was kind of left over in the pan there. Just make sure it's clean. And I'm just gonna kind of coat these splines just so it goes in there a little easier into the transmission. Okay guys, so go ahead and grab a new CV axle here. And let's just kind of, just gonna go through this way for right now. Just to kind of get it up in here. Once you get it kind of like that, just gonna kind of let it sit here for a second. And let me move my camera. Like I said, I kind of lubed the end there with, uh, or those splines with some transmission fluid. So let's go ahead and uh, just make sure those are all clean. And go ahead and slide this in. Just like that, you can see it's flush right up against there. So now what we can do is go ahead and put this uh, bearing bracket on. And this is that new one that came in the kit. Uh, they say you're not supposed to reuse these, but I have in the past with no issues. So just kind of get that on there. Like 
Grab your two 13 millimeter nuts here. So grab your 13 millimeter and let's go ahead and get these snug. And then once you get those snug, they want you to torque those to 25 newton meters or that's equivalent to right around 18 foot pounds. So go ahead and torque those guys. And then of course, let's go ahead and get this fed back through the uh, steering knuckle here. So you may need to pull this out some here. And then kind of turn this. through kind of like that and then what you can do go ahead and just bend this downward and try to get this fed through a little more try to get your uh, ball joint down under there So as you can see, the uh, ball joint isn't fully into the steering knuckle here. So what you can do is kind of move, maneuver this around a little bit here. Try to get it to drop into place. Just watch your fingers because this will spring back up. Let's see if I can just take a mallet here and kind of hit on the ball joint. See, it's kind of going up in there. Let me see if I can get a little more leverage here and move my camera. There we go. It's kind of like that. So now we're fully seated on the steering knuckle and ball joint. So next you can go ahead and uh, get your ball joint bolt in there. Uh, this is the new one that came in that whole kit that I got. They say you're supposed to replace these and not reuse them, but I don't see why it'd be an issue. And you can see they put a little like, looks like red Loctite on these, but go ahead and stick that through. Get your nut on the backside there. Let's go ahead and get that snug. So then go ahead and grab your uh, Torx T55 and then your 18 millimeter for the nut and let's go ahead and get the snug and then we'll do a final torque on it. And so you'll want to torque that to 61 foot pounds. And then you go ahead and get your uh, axle nut put on there. And what I'm gonna do is just kinda zip this on with my impact and I'm, I'm not gonna go too tight because we will do the uh, final torque there at the end. And again, that's a 33 millimeter. Then you can go ahead and get your uh, tie rod back into place here. Put that up in there. 15 millimeter bolt and go ahead and tighten that up and we'll also torque this as well and as you can see that's just spinning on me so if that starts spinning on you just grab a 5 millimeter allen head and then a 15 millimeter open wrench and then you can go ahead and just hold this while getting this snug. And you want to torque that to 37 foot pounds. Just like that. 
that. And then since we're pretty much done on this uh, passenger side, we can go ahead and get our wheel on. But before you do, go ahead and pop out the center cap. Just go ahead and push on it. That way we can uh, access the axle nut to torque it. Let's go ahead and get our tire on. Okay guys, let's move on to the uh, driver's side CV axle now. And I went ahead and lubed up these splines as well. And if you notice, the driver's side one will have this uh, snap ring on the end here. The passenger side does not. So the passenger side is going to go in a little bit easier than this driver's side. But kind of the same thing. Let's go ahead and just kind of get it in place here. This one's a little easier to work with. Go ahead and get that kind of set into the transmission there. Turn this out of the way here. And you may need to kind of pull out or turn. So kind of like that. And let me go down below and let's see if we're all, all the way in or not. Okay, isn't, all right guys, not sure if you can see that, but it is not fully seated into the transmission. So you can try and push, wiggle it back and forth a little more. Or just pull it all the way out again. Stick it back in here. And you can see it still doesn't want to click in. So. What we're going to have to do is probably tap on it. So let's go ahead and uh, just get it through the steering knuckle. Once we're through there, we can go ahead and tap on it with a mallet or something where the uh, axle nut goes on to and get it to click into place. So just like the uh, passenger side here, go ahead and get your strut out with your knuckle. Kind of bend this. your CV axle through it's kind of like that so something kind of like that and then if you notice we're not fully uh, in with the steering knuckle all the way. That's because this uh, CV shaft isn't shoved in all the way. So now let's see if we can just hammer on the end here to try to get in to go in the rest of the way. So go ahead and just take your axle nut here. Just kind of screw it in by hand about like that. Grab your socket and then just a mallet. Let's see if we can just hit on this and try to get it to uh, push in a little bit more. And you can see that kind of pressed in there. So let's go underneath and take a look, see if it's fully seated in the transmission now. So then if you take a look, you can see now that uh, little silver collar is uh, right up against the seal there. So we are uh, fully seated now. Okay, so now with that fully seated, you can see it brought the steering knuckle in some, but we're still gonna have a little trouble sliding this in there, just like the passenger side. So we'll probably have to use a uh, mallet on the bottom here so go ahead and try and hit that in and just like uh, the other side grab your new bolt and go ahead and get that tightened and we'll go ahead and torque that to 61 foot-pounds Then again, get your axle nut zipped on a little bit more there. And then of course your tie rod end again. And 
And then of course, go ahead and torque it to 37 foot pounds. And if you guys noticed, the inner tie rod was pretty worn on this. Um, Cause when this wasn't connected, it would just fall down. So I did order some new inner tie rod ends and then uh, outer tie rod ends as well. I did get one of them. The other one, the shipping was delayed for some reason. Uh, so I will be doing a uh, video in the future on how to replace the inner and outer tie rod end on this car. And then of course, go ahead and get your wheel and tire on. And again, make sure you take out your center cap there. So before I go ahead and jack it up and lower it, just gives us a little more height here. I'm gonna finish putting all this back together. So go ahead and grab this piece here for your uh, air filter housing. It kind of just sets in here. Kind of hooks right in there. Get your bolt in there. Then you go ahead and get your battery tray in. And then just kind of double check, just make sure everything looks good under here. Uh, everything's plugged back in and uh, where it should be. Battery tree. Wind up kind of like that. Get your three 10 millimeter bolts in place. And I did put some annexes on these just because these were really rusted in here. And of course, get your battery in there. And again, your negative side is going to go towards the firewall. Positive side here. And I think what I'll do is, it's easier if you kind of bring that out some. And then get your uh, negative terminal on there. Kind of like that. Grab your 10 millimeter. Go ahead and tighten that one. Got a good connection on that. Drop that into place. And then of course, this is gonna lift up over these tabs here. Clicking in there. There we go. Just like that. Get your uh, positive connection on here. Go ahead and tighten that one up. Grab your battery hold down, and then you'll notice you got a notch on this one side that's gonna to go towards the driver's side, because it's gonna kind of slip into the battery case there. Just like that. Put your two nuts on here. Put your cover on, but again, the uh, back side of the, or the back half of this was missing. So I'll just get this front one on. And actually it looks like, I forgot this goes into this little slot here. Let's stick that one there. Of 
course, go ahead and grab your air filter housing. And we'll attach it to the throttle body there. Grab your seven millimeter and go ahead and I need to loosen this a little bit because it's not going all the way on there. There we go. Seven millimeter and tighten that up. And then you can finish connecting this. Just make sure that's fully seated in there as well. Plug in your mass airflow sensor here. Push down on that. Locking tab. And then you got this, which just clicks into here. And you got your lines here. Go ahead and connect that one. Here it click. Same with this one. Just press down. Clicks in there just like that. All right, guys, so that should be everything up here. Let's go ahead and uh, jack it up, get this lowered to the ground, and uh, torque our lug nuts and then also our uh, axle nuts. And then almost forgot, let's go ahead and get our uh, splash shield on here first, but I'm going to go ahead and spray this with some brake clean now that our axle's in place there just to kind of clean up some of that fluid that had uh, leaked out when we were filling it. So go ahead and grab your shield here again, just double check, make sure everything's the way it should be that all looks good go ahead and get this into place all right guys so let's go ahead and uh, jack it up here and uh, get our jack stands out of here and if you remember right i had to jack up from the sides because if i get my jack under here pull my jack stands i lower it this big jack's not going to be able to slide out of here. So I'm going to have to jack up each side and uh, remove the jack stands. So let me do that real quick. All right, so once you get both sides lowered, let's go ahead and tighten up that axle nut now. That's going to be uh, 180 foot pounds. Grab your 33, stick it through there, and tighten it up. Just like that. You can grab your center cap here, go ahead and stick that in. You can grab your 19 millimeter, and we're going to torque these lug nuts to 100 foot pounds. Just like that. I'll go ahead and do the same to the other side. Okay guys, so what we need to do next is uh, relearn the TCM and all that with the scan tool. Um, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and start this up. Again, if you uh, change your rear main seal, make sure you fill the oil before you go ahead and start it. I went ahead and added uh, four and a half quarts. That's what this takes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this, get it up to normal operating temperature, just letting it idle. Cause when we go to uh, hook up the scan tool, you wanna make sure the engine has that normal operating temperature cause you want the idle to be correct once we start uh, relearning all that. So let's just go ahead and start it here. And then as you can see, our temperature is cold there. So I'll go ahead and uh, let this idle until we get up to normal operating temperature. Okay guys, as you can see, we're up to uh, normal operating temperature. So go ahead and uh, shut it off. And then you can go ahead and uh, hook up your scan tool here. So 
So the scan tool I'm going to be using is from a company called X Tool. Um, they're kind of on the cheaper side of scan tools, but they do work real well. And uh, you can get these pretty cheap on uh, Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for this exact tool that I have. But what you want to do, I'm going to go ahead and just press the on button, but not start it. We're going to go to auto scan. Go to Ford USA. And it tells you your VIN number, engine, all that. And then you want to go to system selection. Second one, which is going to be control module of transmission. So the TCM. And then you want to click on special functions. And then we want to do the uh, TCM adaptive learning. Yes. We're already on the on position. First, we're going to do the uh, TR sensor. So go ahead and click on that. And then let it do its thing here. And if some of this stuff takes too long, I'll go ahead and just fast forward so we don't have to sit here and wait through uh, this kind of stuff. And then we want to perform adaptive learning. Hit yes. Make sure the gear shifter is in park, which it is. And just again, make sure it's in park. So go ahead and hit okay. What you want to do now is go ahead and put it in reverse, hit OK, down into neutral, OK, and then I don't know why it says car start indication, but that's drive. So I'm going to go into drive, OK, and then you want to go into low or sport mode, depending on which model you have. Hit OK, and the position has been learned, so hit OK. So now what you do is you'll go through, and I don't know why it says low battery, but that actually means low or sport mode, so on these cheaper scan tools, that's kind of what you get. But what you do is I'm going to shift up to uh, drive here, so you can see car start indication, which is drive, up to neutral, up to reverse, and then back to park. So you're just verifying that your shift lever is uh, what it's saying on here. And that all looks good. So then you can release the brake, hit OK. And then they say to turn the ignition off. So go ahead and turn it off. Hit OK. And then go ahead and let it do its thing. Okay, so then let's go ahead and click on that again. Go ahead and turn to the on position. Hit OK. So then you want to click on TCM Adaptive Learning again. Hit Yes. Go ahead and turn it on without starting it. Hit OK. What we're going to do now is the uh, shift drum. So go ahead and click on that. Okay. Let it do its thing here. Okay, now what you want to do is make sure it's in park. Go ahead and uh, press on the brake pedal. You want to make sure you don't let off on it. So go ahead and press down on that. Hit OK. And you can kind of hear it make some weird noises. Go ahead and just let it do its thing while keeping uh, the brake pedal pressed. Okay, that function is complete so hit okay and then go ahead and let off the brake because you don't want it to start so then go ahead and turn it off and then hit okay so then you want to hit on tcm adaptive learning again Yes, go ahead and turn it on, but not start it. Hit OK. Lastly, we're going to do the clutch. And hit OK, yes. Make sure it's in park. Go ahead and press on the brake pedal. OK. 
then it's going to go through all these. The transmission's going to make funny noises, but it's going to show that it's passing all this. And what you do is go ahead and start the engine. Hit we'll OK. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to use my left foot on the brake pedal holding it. And then my right foot, I'm going to be stepping on the gas pedal. And you're going to want to floor it all the way to the uh, bottom of the floor there to where the uh, RPMs max out. And you're going to continue to hold that. So let me go ahead and step on the gas. Maximum RPMs. Hit OK. Go ahead and let off, let it return to idle. Once it does that, we're gonna go uh, continue to hold the brake here, hit okay. And this is where it says that it needs to be at normal operating temperature. That's why we got it up to that. And you wanna make sure your HVAC controls, your AC, none of that's on, uh, radio, headlights, because you want it to have a steady idle at this point. So go ahead and uh, press the brake and hold it. Let it do its thing. Sorry about that guys, my camera fell here. And there you can see, clutch adapted learn successful. Kind of shows you some of that, successful complete. So now what we need to do is uh, go ahead and take it on a drive. And then you can go ahead and turn it off here. Hit okay. Go ahead and let it do its thing here. Okay, so just like that. And then it did say to just go in and uh, clear all the D DTC codes. So I'll just go ahead and turn it to on. Hit yes. Hit yes. Just like that. And go to your PCM. Let's just clear those codes. Yes. Yes. Okay, so just like that guys. So now let's go ahead and disconnect this uh, scan tool here and let's take it for a drive. Okay guys, so in, uh, as you go to take this for a drive, um, just for the first, you know, 10 miles or something, just kind of take it easy. Don't be uh, flooring it or any of that. You just want that transmission to shift real smooth and everything. So like I said, just kind of take it easy as you go around on your uh, first test drive here. And then just want to make sure that it shifts just fine and everything. one feels like it's doing just fine so I'll go ahead and take this probably on at least like a five mile drive here just to make sure everything's good but so far everything feels fine all right guys so as you can see back from my drive you can see I got right at 11 miles since everything reset since we disconnected the battery and uh, the cards running awesome it's shifting awesome um the idle is actually way better and uh feels great because before uh just sitting here the whole car would kind of vibrate a lot so i think whoever did the clutch before this did not tighten the flex plate nuts in the sequence you're supposed to and did not torque them correctly so that's one of the things if you guys got a bad vibration at idle uh most likely those uh flex plate nuts aren't tightened correctly but Anyways, before I wrap up, I just want to show you here. So since I did disconnect the battery, um, I did lose, uh, this car has auto down and auto up on all four windows. So it must've lost its memory. So if you see, I press down, 
you can see it just stops. Or if I go up, you can see it just stops. So I'm gonna show you guys really quick how to reset that. So what you wanna do is go ahead and hold it down and bring it down until it stops, let go, and then go ahead and hold it down for five seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. And then you're gonna take it up, hold it up, release for one second, and then go ahead and hold it up again for five seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. And now that should be reset. So let's go ahead and try it. There you go. Let's try the auto up. Perfect. And I'm not sure. So it looks like we're gonna have to do this for each window because this is the passenger. Let me try the rears here. Yeah, same thing. So I think we're gonna have to do this for every single window. So let me go ahead and try it here. So go ahead and hold this down until it stops. Release. Hold down for five seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Let off, bring it up. Let off, and then hold it up again for five seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Let off. And there we go. Perfect. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and do this for these other uh, rear windows as well. Just want to show you guys that really quick. Okay, guys, so I got the auto up and auto down all adjusted on the rear windows as well. Everything's working like it should. And with that, that's going to wrap up this video. I know this video is very long, um, but I'd like to show you guys from start to finish the whole process to do this job and uh, changing out this dual clutch. Uh, like I said, this is a known issue on these cars, this and also the Fiesta, which is pretty much the same process. But uh, hopefully this video helps you out. And uh, check out the description again for all the parts I used and then also the tools. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, check out all my other videos. I got a whole bunch on this car and probably some more to come, so look for those in the future. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.